Hello, this is Nathan. This is Cameron. This is David. And I can't believe you fuckers watched Star Trek 2 without me. Uh, How dare you. It was your idea. <laughs> <laughs> and we are the commentators. And today we are watching... Well, let me start out with we're recording this the weekend of March 13th. And this particular and we're watching weekend, Friday the 13th, apparently. And this particular weekend, there was a movie coming out called Cinderella. It is a live-action Disney movie based on the cartoon, of course, directed by a man named Kenneth Branagh, who I think, personally, is the greatest living actor we have right now. I, I honestly believe that. He's one of my favorites. Amazing actor, good director in his own right. So I figured, let's watch a Kenneth Branagh movie. Oh, here comes Silence of the Lambs guy. That's <laughs> fine. Good makeup. Zeno though. looks weird. Yeah. I <laughs> uh, love that voice. Uh, so there were so many movies to choose from. We could have watched uh, Henry V, which was his breakout movie. He was nominated for Best Director and Best Actor. We could have watched, you know, his four-hour uncut version of Hamlet, which is long, but it's really good. Uh, he directed a great action movie a couple years ago called Jack Ryan, Shadow Recruit, based on the Tom Clancy novels, which he also co-starred in. He even directed a Marvel movie. He directed Thor, for God's sake. There were so many options for us to choose from. So I chose... The classic 1999 <laughs> film with Will Smith, Kevin Kline, there he is. Selma Hayek, and Kenneth Branagh. There he is. Wild, Wild West. Classic. Classic movie. That's right. In the year 1999, we've had stuff like American Beauty, Magnolia, Being John Malkovich, The Iron Giant, Toy Story 2, South Park, The Talent Mr. Ripley, Fight Club, Sleepy Hollow, Eyes no, Wide no, Shut. No, no. It's, it's all about... It's all about the Wild Wild West. Do you know why it's all about... Do well, you want to know why, though? It's all please, about the Wild Wild please West. Please, tell me. Because, sure enough, there's a goddamn giant fucking spider in it. <laughs> oh, we'll get to that. We'll, we'll, get, we'll, we'll get to John Peter's wet dream when, when it shows up later in the movie. And, but, you know, uh, I have to mention that with the, the credits how it's opening, it's kind of like setting you up like, hey, this is going to be a fun time. I, I do really like this opening credit scene. It's, it sort of very slightly harkens back to the original television show, which I'm also, which I'm a huge fan of. I grew up watching that show. Uh, and Elmer Bernstein, wonderful Elmer composer. Bernstein, great. Yeah, so I, 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 like, I like the opening theme song. I like the opening credits. You know, it's, it's off to a good start. Yeah. But I like the spider uh, motifs. It's yeah. reminding me of Spider-Man. And <laughs> Bo Welch, who's a great production designer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This, now, this you know movie. What, and Michael okay, Balhus. Now, you know what's great. another credit sequence that you love, but you don't like the movie? What's that? Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. Oh. oh. Me and Credit Nathan, sequence was the only good thing in Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. Hey, I would say there are two good things. Mm -hmm. Credit sequence and Daniel Craig's performance. He, well, that's because he's Daniel Craig. He yeah. turn out a good performance in anything. For the record, I like that film. <laughs> Much like Kenneth Branagh, who I, I think in this movie, even though it's a complete piece of shit movie, Slanty Kenneth Tim. Branagh gives an amazing performance. So this, since <laughs> Bo Wells did work with Tim Byrne before, I guess he's making a little western from him right now, right? The Slanty Town. You know, did, I, did Sonnenfeld also do um, Adam's Family? Ooh. I'm sure, yeah, probably. Well, well, Son so Sonnenfeld. You are Sonnenfeld, correct. Sonnenfeld, yes. Yes, you did, you did. This yeah. is post-Men in Black, where this movie yeah. had everything going for it. You got the star and the director of Men in Black yep. doing their kind of follow-up film. It was released around, like, 4th of July, because it was, like, mm -hmm, the big exactly. really summer. You know, I know the Old West what? was a dirty, grimy, dingy place, but having sex in the town, you know, Water, water Tower, yeah. that's just that's just not right. That was you. Look, he was trying a new thing called protein water. <laughs> Yeah, this this was this movie had everything going for it and just failed spectacularly. And that's one of the reasons I, I picked this movie is I feel that it reaches those heights, those heights like movies like Armageddon and Batman and Robin and and Space Mutiny, where it reaches that level of so bad it's good. To me, this is a so bad it's good movie. I know everyone doesn't agree with me, but that's just the way I personally feel. And a, and a big part of it has to do with. Kenneth Branagh's yeah. performance. I'd actually go and, and say uh, look, that it's not look. even the worst film of that year, which it did win the Razzie Awards for worst picture, worst director. Wait, Brent Spiner. Where? That guy. The guy with Wait, the data? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was Brent Spiner. What? No. Oh, cut look. away from Will Smith's mugging so we can see it. Um, He wants to use the glory hole. I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's what he does on weekends when he's not being a bounty hunter. Now, it's funny that I say mugging because this film is a lot of mugging in it. Now, mm. Do you think this movie would have been better without Kevin Klein, but with Tommy Lee Jones? 
Um, <laughs> because the funny thing I was going to bring this up yeah. when it comes to Kevin Klein, I was even going to see him that, again. Is that he does mug a lot? He does. Stuff. He does fight them later on. So I'm sure we'll yeah. get another close. I'm, if, if, I swear that was. Brett I've seen Spiner. this movie a bunch of times. If Brett Spiner is now in this movie, I will piss my pants right I'm, here. I'm watching right on now, the couch. So. All over my pizza. Whee! Whoa, whoa, whoa! No, no, no! Whoa! Oh my God! Oh! <laughs> oh, and he's naked. Oh, that's that's oh, that's crotch? good comedy right there. We got a cross. We oh, didn't get Will. to see Big Willie's Willie. <laughs> Talk about and Big Willie style, am I right? Boy. Yeah, you know. And that's his blood. And I'm sure these um, Wild West white people are perfectly fine with a naked black man crashing into. Is that Fred Spider? It might not be now. I got I got an IMDb with this shit right now. This is <laughs> now. Bear in mind, the Razzies thought this was the worst film of the year. That means they thought it was worse than Star Wars: The Phantom Menace. No. <laughs> was that nominated for worst picture? Uh, yep. It's not Brent Spiner. It's not. Oh, I guess not. Yeah. You got me. You got me really excited. Do not tease me. Well, when I first do saw not it, tease me with Brent Spiner. It was such Cameron. a quick look. I thought it was him. <laughs> Meanwhile, across town, you know, across town. Okay, but well that lady is Brent Spiner. <laughs> <laughs> Brent Spiner can play anything. Yeah, Interesting thing, you bring up the Razzies. Um, I believe his name was Robert Conrad, who played the Jim West in the original Tavern Show, sure. accepted yep. all the Razzies because he hated this movie so much. They asked him to be in it, in the movie, and he refused. Which, you know, yeah. good for him. <laughs> all of a sudden we're watching Too Long Fu. Would you fuck me? <laughs> I'd fuck me hard. <laughs> And now, bear in mind, I love me some Kevin Klein. He's a wonderful yeah. actor. Oh, yeah. But is it just sometimes when he mugs, you just be like, would you please stop, Klein? <laughs> oh, yeah, there's there nothing tab. wrong with that Salma High, I found. Oh, 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 oh I oh, also want to point me. out when it came to the solid commentary, we talked about great asses. Salma High. Salma High has a great ass. Yeah. Salma High is a great everything. That is true. She's a mm. gorgeous. And she's 51 this year. No! Yes! Mm. That's a good she's, 51. That's it a is. nice vintage. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good year. <laughs> good makeup in this movie. I mean, like, they had, you know, shit tons of money to do everything they wanted, so the production value and everything looks great. Yeah, but, no, this man. Would, this would make for a good double feature with The Lone Ranger, if you think about it. Like, two, oh. two, big, two big Western films, uh, big stars... Big bombs at the box office. You see, that, that's the thing. Wild Wild West still made decent money, but it yeah. didn't reach those heights that yeah. it, that everyone thought it would because of the success of Men Oh, she, so she just does masturbation shows. Okay. Yeah, so it's not like Independence Day or um, Men yeah. in Black or Enemy of the State, which were big Will Smith movies. Yeah. So while it was technically a success, it just wasn't what everyone hoped and thought it would did Will Smith Would've bounce been. back in 2000 with something? I don't remember. Oh, yeah, he had Legend I'm of Bagger sure, Fans. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Legend but of that... Fans. They had Men in Black 2. Well, while it was that, again, it was a piece of crap movie, but mm -hmm. it made a bunch of money because it's the Men in Black sequel. I'd argue that film is far worse than this one. Because at least this one, mm. it tries well, that's, that's a tough and call. it fails. It, I, I'll, <laughs> say, I'll say this. I would give Men in Black 2 worse than this movie just based on one thing. This movie doesn't really have bad actors. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Men in Black 2... Who's the bad actor? Johnny Knoxville? No, no, I'm not going to say Johnny Knoxville. No, <laughs> what Johnny Knoxville Johnny does... Johnny Knoxville is decent. What John, not, for me, I would... I'm going to say, you know, Laura Flynn Boyle. I don't like Laura. Oh, yeah. She's, she's meh. Yeah. She's, and she's not a really a good villainess. Yeah. Classic Western stuff right here. Yeah. Jumping on the horse has got to stop the, the stagecoach or whatever. Yep. Well, you just said it was basically stuff. referencing a stagecoach. Or Clara will die and then, you know... <laughs> Doc will never meet her. So is this like the C-section team of whores? <laughs> it places the lotion on the skin and does this whenever it's told. Yeah, clear, clearly she's the best of the bunch. Yeah, like. She's asking for it. Oh, nope. Oh, there she is. There's the best of the bunch. He's into redheads. Mm -hmm. You've seen Monk, right? He's pretty good in Monk. So, I don't get it. Is this a prequel to Sons of the Lambs or Monk? <laughs> No, Monk's great. You can't. Re he doesn't really even look like Ted Levine. Mm -mm. Sounds like him though. He's got that <laughs> voice. And um, this is an interesting uh, little bit bit of trivia. Do, uh, do you know that Ted Levine's uh, voice, specifically as Buffalo Bill, is what inspired Seth Green's uh, mm -hmm. Chris Griffin voice? Yeah. Oh, I can hear it. Oh yeah. Oh wow. It's a nice earwax bit there. <laughs> 
<laughs> See some good little bits here and there. Yeah, it has, it has yeah, yeah, just little bits and it's just, here and there. And it's just whenever I watch Howard Berry Sonnenfeld, how he films his, his scenes, I remember that he was once a cinematographer. Mm -hmm. He worked with uh, the Coen brothers with Blood Simple, mm -hmm. uh, Raising Arizona, Miller's Crossing. He worked with Danny DeVito on Throw Mama from the Train. So there are a bunch of these wonderful like shots he's, when they push in like really close up to the actors' faces. But, but um, what you said that um, the Razzies of this movie is worth is worse than the Phantom Menace. I call bullshit completely on that. <laughs> no, here's one reason. Why? One reason. And I'll say this by saying, I'll, but let me preface this by saying this. I don't like any of the prequels, but I do think Phantom Menace is the best of the prequels. Really? And here's why. I, it actually has sets. That's true. I, it, I will actually, give... it actually looks... More like something is mm -hmm. happening now. Whether yeah. now, now whether that's something that is whether that's something is interesting or not, eh, let's say not. Yeah. But the reason I'll say this is better than Phantom Menace is because it's visually interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't Phantom know. If, I don't know if I if I'd say Phantom Menace is the best of the prequels, but I will agree that it's definitely by far well, the best looking because yeah, they use well, a lot more practical sets. It's shot on film as opposed to. The early digital. early early days of you know digital so, well, cameras and stuff. The, reason, so the other reasons I say by far looks the best. The other reasons mm -hmm. I say that is let's just all agree that the Attack of the Clones is god awful. It's horrible. It is just bad. It's, it's like appealing a rotten onion, hoping <laughs> one of the layers is going to be fresh oh. and you get to the core. It's like oh shit, this is Ooh. all rotten. It's going to get some sexy. So it's times. rotten as Ted Levine's ear right there. Look at his, that. He, his ear looks like a prolapsed anus <laughs> <laughs> with. With a we record watched, player yeah, coming out record, of it. Yeah. You remembered scenes from Solo? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I told you the cross-eyed dude is my favorite. <laughs> it is a Tim Burton film. It is but a see, Tim Burton film. See, this is where I don't get it because you don't need to have those swirly things to hypnotize somebody with your tits. Yeah. <laughs> They're tits. They Especially to either do Kevin Klein's tits. <laughs> yeah. This is just called Wanda Kevin Klein tits. He's got me. <laughs> yeah. Or if he calls in his wife's tits. Oh, oh, the wonderful Phoebe Cates. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but um, the reason, and the, the reason I think FMS is better than Revenge of the Sith is Revenge of the Sith loses me because how boring it gets. <laughs> like a forty. One thing you can say about Wild Wild West, it's never boring. Yeah, <laughs> forty five. Like yeah, it, it's so boring. We're not talking about <laughs> it. <laughs> 45 minutes, you know, lightsaber fight, you know, Vader's not even really seduced in the dark side, he just kind of <laughs> trips into it. Even the costume design is pretty good in this. Oh yeah, Deborah like Scott. They've got, the costume they have like 100 million plus budget, they were, they were banking off the success of uh, Men in Black, so they had all the money in the world to do whatever the fuck they wanted. And they didn't bother to actually read a good screenplay. But you know what would have been? A, you would have, would have been another great sci-fi western movie with a good budget behind it, and even with and with an even more charismatic actor. Cowboys and Aliens. No, I'm talking about a <laughs> good idea. <laughs> I think Nathan's it's Cowboys and Aliens. I think Nathan's going to get behind me on this. A, a movie version starring the original cast of The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. Oh, oh I would watch that. Hell yeah. And why, why wouldn't I get behind that? I love me some Briscoe County I don't know. Jr. I didn't know if you'd ever seen Briscoe uh, County. Brisco, it's Bruce Briscoe Campbell. And I, I was a oh, kid. Yeah. You know what? What was the name of the guy who played Lord Bowler? He and Bruce Campbell were great. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can't. Like, I, like when I, I, I loved him, Briscoe County so much. It was it came on a time before I understand what canceled television was. Oh, so God. it just stopped coming on. When they were like, what the? What yeah. happened to Briscoe? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is one of those movies where it, it, you can't, I don't know, I don't know if I can really call this Western sci-fi. Cyberpunk? It has, kind of has, it, it's, it's kind of a steampunk-ish. Steampunk sci-fi, though. Steampunk Western, yeah, it's, it's, it's a hard kind of category to pin down. Well, oh, Kenneth Brown is so fucking good. Yeah, Listen, looking like, like widely, you know what he got a little tiny moments like that. You know what he's reminding so me of? Silent in, Whiplash? No, that, now that you've said it, but no, yeah. when, when, when <laughs> you remind me of that shot, was you know the shot at the end of um, Guy Ritchie's first Sherlock Holmes movie, where oh, um, yeah, Moriarty yeah, yeah. shows up? Yes. You might As opposed to the second one, where Moriarty does show up and it's kind of underwhelming. You know what you also reminded me of? It's, did, did anyone ever watch The Great Race? Blake Edwards' Great Race? Great ja Jack was, it, was it about white people? Uh, it's, um, I hope so. It inspired, it inspired <laughs> wacky races. 
But in it, oh, okay. Jack Lemmon plays a villain. I thought it's a Mad Mad Professor Fate. I thought it's a Mad 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 World inspired uh, Wacky Races. No, I thought it was. Well, the Great Race thing came out the same year, 62, 63. 64. I know what movie you're talking about yeah. now, yeah. And that's because from, he's got the big mustache yes, and all that and, shit. And, yeah. um, and uh, uh, Columbo. Okay, Peter he Falk looks cool. He is looks his cool. Yeah, no, look at him. He's Will Smith. He always looks cool. <laughs> Have you seen After Earth? No more cool oh, than that. This, no, okay, I take back my Again, if, he, if it had been called After Earth and he had punched an alien. <laughs> and said, welcome to After Earth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm curious to look up the history and see if there were actually sheep grazing on the grounds of the White House in those days. Because even with a giant mechanical spider, I find the sheep grazing mm-hmm. a little bit hard to believe. Oh, I believe me, Fanny Gary. Oh, and I also want to point out with the Razzies, we were talking about that. Do you know what film was also nominated for Worst Picture, which I, I call bullshit on? What? The Blair Witch Project. No, the movie is not bad. It's all right. It, yeah, but it's and not the, worst and the other thing is, it, no. it was, it's, when you look back at it, it was a revolutionary movie. I actually really liked it the first yeah. time I saw it. It's upon re-watching it where I was like, why did I like this? Like, I can't really remember. I, oh, I, think I don't know. It's one of those things that doesn't really... For a slight second, yeah, I, I thought you were going to get really sarcastic and go, I liked it when it was first called The Last Broadcast. I thought you'd get really sarcastic there for a second. <laughs> I'm with The Last, Bro- Last Broadcast until, until the it's... ending. Mm-hmm. Well, it switches from being a documentary to like a... Yeah. Well, if it's not so small, because maybe... Nathan, have you seen The Last Broadcast? I have not, no. Well, uh, I'm maybe... too busy looking at Kevin Klein looking like the guy on the $50 bill. <laughs> he does look exactly like the guy on the $50 bill. I'll give him that. Oh, he looks like Grover Cleveland? <laughs> That's Super Ke- brother! Kevin Klein is a really good actor, so he's a good choice to play the character who plays a ton of other yeah. different characters. But I don't know, something about his performance in this movie just. almost like he's trying too hard in some places. I don't know. Um, where's the Secret Service? <laughs> See, the thing I found upon rewatching this movie for. For this commentary is the the plot line, the the main story overall, the arc. It hits all those points perfectly, beat by beat, to make a good screenplay. Like you've got the two, you know, conflicting characters who don't like each other, and then they have to, you know, work together. Yeah. And so they're butting sex. heads. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Bud Court's back there wondering what the hell's going on. <laughs> But then, you know, as the Wait, story he... progresses and they get to the bad guy and they have to work together and all these points, they hit perfectly throughout, you know, the film, but everything surrounding it, just the dialogue and the, just, ooh, it's just almost cringe-inducing. Didn't that um, guy in the background who was behind him, didn't he play a Bob the Goon in Batman? Was it him? Um, I thought yeah. it was. I don't know. It's another thing you'd have to IMDb. <laughs> Thank God for IMDb. I'm just going to say that right out. Bob. <laughs> Bob Gunn. <laughs> I'm going to need a moment, fellas. And by the way, if, by the way, if you're somebody out there and you think um, the, the Tim Burton 1989 Batman movie is bad and you use the excuse, and I read comics, I would know. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, shit. I read comics, too. I know my Batman shit. That's a great representation. It's great <laughs> character moments. That I... moment of Bob Gunn, that signature Joker. <laughs> And the line too. Yeah. So in other words, you don't have to like the movie, but if you use the excuse, and I read the comics as a as a way to make your opinion more level, eat a bag of dick. Didn't <laughs> Devin Faraci say that? I'm not gonna mention that guy's name. Yeah, that guy's a that guy's a cunt. Oops, sorry guys. <laughs> so so Will Smith here. Yeah. <laughs> nice I do White apologize. House cake. Marzipan. Now, mm. Oh man, now I want cake. You do know the tarantulas I even aren't want, like I want cake, I want cake even more. Well, you see, they're big, therefore they're poisonous. Even, um, even though Trent so was like, hey, Will Smith, can I have your autograph? So wait, are you saying there's going to be a giant spider in this movie? I well, they wouldn't be surprised. Giant spider. They keep mentioning giant spiders. As you far know, as I can tell, the bad guy really likes spiders so now, far. So. Do you know why <laughs> they have to be spiders? Because they're the fiercest insects in the, in the, they're the animal fierce, kingdom? They're the fiercest killers in the insect kingdom. In, in the kingdom. insect kingdom. Because of That's good old John Peters who produced this film. If, if, if anyone out there has and, not watched an Even with Kevin Smith, just go to YouTube, type in Kevin Smith Superman. And you'll get it all. And it will change your life. It will I'm, change I'm, the way you look at Hollywood. On that subject, it's, it's I've, actually, I've actually read Kevin Smith's Superman script. Given what he had to work within, mm-hmm. those confines... Mm-hmm. 
It's not bad. Not bad at all. Well, not only that, I can't wait till the documentary comes out, which is because um, just oh, really that about documentary the, looks about great. everybody working, not just with what Kevin Smith had to endure, but we've already mentioned what Tim Burton, what had, Tim to Burton had to go through, and that is Tim Burton had to go through John Peters while making Batman, and he, he was like, I swear I'd never want to work with that man again. But they're like, Hey, come on, everything's cool. We can make Superman. We can get Nick Cage, and it's like. Fuck yeah, I'll make my movie with Nick I Cage. I would have loved to see Nick, Nick, Nick Cage as Superman. Oh, you know absolutely. What I, <laughs> I want to see Nick Cage play everything in every movie. Oh, there goes that wacky Kevin Klein. <laughs> He's got a wacky mobile. <laughs> okay, be, okay, be, okay, better wacky Wild West inventor. Kevin Klein or... Um, God, what was it? Doc it, Brown? Doc Brown. No, not, no, <laughs> That's Wild, what I was thinking no, of. <laughs> no, I mean someone who existed, in, who, who in his fictional world was born and raised in the Wild West. Um... I got Aston, the guy who played Gomez, because he was the uh, he was the scientist in Briscoe County Junior who invented all that. Oh, Julia. Play- oh, John Aston. John, John, John Aston. Yeah. Oh, oh. Now I love this. Oh, and here's the thing. You see, M. Good M- old E. Emmett. Yep. M. <laughs> Emmett Walsh. Now the thing about M. Emmett Walsh was uh, Roger Ebert had this rule, and that is no movie can be completely bad if it had either Harry Dean Stanton or M. Emmett Walsh. This. Yeah, but this movie's pretty completely of, bad. It's, yeah, this it, 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 even, even for, for, for me it. as as much as I love M. Emmett, um, I've said it before. I'll say it again until the movie ends. The saving grace of this movie for me is Kenneth Branagh. He is, and I can't wait till we get to the and scenes then, and where the, he showcases how good he is. And then the backup saving Whee! grace is Salma Hayek dressed as a dance dance girl. That's like stifle, oh, die die what about Will Smith dressed as the dancing girl? Oh, we'll, we'll get to that scene uh. later, where he gets jiggy with it. That's a little play on words for those of you who know Will Smith's music. Do they say fake? Do they say boobies? Fake boobies. Said boobies. They say boobies in the say West. Say boobies because it's a funny word. What do, what, what do ghost bees say? Boobies. Do you think? Actually, here's a question though. What do you think this would have been funnier if it was Tommy Lee Jones as the Will Smith part? Not not like how he is. So now. it's Tommy Lee like, Jones like, and so Kevin Klein in the Old West. Yeah, yeah like, like a younger Tommy Lee or Josh yeah. Brolin. Can you imagine? Josh hey, you Brolin? wait. He can't penetrate me through. <laughs> It's hard, it's hard as dragon scales. <laughs> See, I actually think that might be one of the problems with the movie, in the sense that both of these guys are funny. Yeah, they're both they're both good tri- point. Well, no, no, they're both not funny. They're both trying, trying to, to be, be funny. funny. Well, that's, let's let's, let's, let's no, make a clear distinction yeah, right now. <laughs> but what I mean is, like, they're both actors who can Uh-oh. be funny, who who, really who are funny. funny and can be funny, and they're both. Trying Uh-oh. to play off each other too much, and it's just it's Uh-oh. just a little bit of a mess. Oh, he's getting all quirky, dirty, do. Yeah. Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. this is okay. an Academy Award winner. Academy okay. Award winner. Okay. Brown again, right here. again, Brown, excuse me. Again, that would have been a great gag if it had been a lot more subtle. Yeah. No, because you can like you know like he's doing some kind of chi thing like like getting into like a realistic battle pose, and then finally. And I do like this idea of them having this train that has all these cool futuristic gadgets on it and it can do all these things. It's a neat, neat idea, except for this part. I don't know why you would need a reclining chair to go upside down under a chain. But, and, and, uh, since, and since so the basic te- idea but, of it is. But here's neat. the thing since technically his head is down further, Kevin Klein should be dead. Yeah. yeah. He should be, but then the movie would be over and we could all go. And I, I also um, want to call into question that Harry Dean Stanton rule. Because, let me just say, having Showtime as a teenager should <laughs> kind of prove that Harry Dean Stanton was in some shitty movies. Oh, no, he was. It was just a, it was a rule of affection, as it were. However, they did have great titties. <laughs> That's nothing. What was the, 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 the um, oh, God, Shannon yeah, Worry film. The Shannon Worry film. The, the one, wait. With the, David Carradine. He was in Animal Instinct. That's what it was. And there's David Carradine. And you're like... Holy shit, what's he doing in this movie? <laughs> See, I just call them as, uh, oh, the one where her boobs are really good. Oh, and uh, speaking of other great asses and great what have you, Shannon Weary, right? Wait, Nathan, you don't know what... I, oh, I, I would say her tits yeah. are the star. Well, I got it, I got it. Remember the scene from Me, My, Sina- uh, me, my, <coughs> me Myself, and Irene? Where um, Jim Carrey sucking some girl's tit? I've not seen Me, Myself, and Irene. Aww. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, to dis- I'm sorry to disappoint you. No. It's not that Okay, sh- shouldn't the eyes be melting? Well, the light's coming from behind them. It looks like he's... It's lo- it looks like, like right now, the look in his face oh, look. reminds me of the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> Who, Will Smith's face? No, no the, 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 the... 
Oh, it's such a comedic reaction. <laughs> I, I, again, I kind of want to see Tommy Lee, Tommy Lee Jones by saying that. That is a dead man's head. Yeah. Do you know, I, I, I hope you don't know the answer so that I can oh. I can please you. Do you know who the original cast for this movie was supposed to be? Oh, I don't know that. The, animated. It, was, it was originally going to be directed by Richard Donner. Oh, that they, oh they, no. they weren't able to get the rights, so he ended up doing Maverick with Mel Gibson and, okay. and James Garner. Okay. It was originally supposed to be Richard Donner directing, uh-huh. Mel Gibson as Jim West, uh-huh. oh. and George Clooney as oh. Artemis Gordon. Oh. How fucking awesome would that have been? That oh. would have been a great, uh, great movie. Me. Good one. Nice one. <laughs> I, in my dreams, I just I want to see... The Donner Gibson oh, Clooney version of Wild Wild West, because you know, Donner actually directed episodes of Wild Wild West. If yeah, I'm not mistaken, and Maverick yeah. was a really solid flick. And, and Maverick is a thousand times better yeah. than Wild Wild West that's, in every way. That's how you do but a comedy Maverick western. Is a, yeah, exactly. Oh, it's actually funny with George Clooney. I actually, oh, for a long time, I had this idea for a Lone Ranger. When they're talking about how you know Lone Ranger Johnny Depp was gonna get was gonna be Tonto, right? I'm cool with that idea, and I'm still all right with that idea. He gets to wear a funny but, hat. It's all good. Yeah, but the thing was, who who are you gonna get to play the Lone Ranger? I wanted it to be George Clooney. So you get these two guys who are both can do comedy, do it rather well, <laughs> and I think that they could you know play off each other. And that I imagine it's sort of like uh, Sap Brannigan and Kiff from Futurama, where you. Was like, like I'm the Lone Ranger, Kiff. I was like, what was it? Um, what's the stupid name? Tano, Tano. We gotta go save the day. <laughs> Very well, sir. Something like that, but more affectionate. Like he might have been an idiot, but he at least gets the job done and does it well. Hey, you know, on the subject, since um, it's in believe me, this is connected. To what I'm gonna say, because um, the Lone Ranger is the um, ancestor of the Green Hornet. Oh, that is true. I would love to see George Clooney in a serious version of the Green Hornet because the Seth oh. Rogen version sucked. Oh, so who would you get to play yeah. Kato? Kato, I don't know because my idea is like they've they've both been doing it for a while, so, and I'd kind of want it to be a period piece too. Ken Watanabe? No, because I again, I want someone who has that like Bruce Lee kind of frame to them. I'm sorry, sorry, we're having a little conversation. I'd want somebody with like a Bruce Lee frame to him, but I can't think of many act, many Asian actors who have that like frame to them. That frame where you're like, oh god, I'm not gonna fuck. Guys, with guys, guy. why are we talking about Green Hornet when we could be looking at Kevin Klein's tits right now? I don't look, know. look at those glorious breasts. Hey, why are we looking? Klein. Why are we looking at Kevin Klein's tits right now? We're gonna get on the internet and look at Phoebe Cates' tits. <laughs> we love you, Phoebe. Um, because she didn't win an Oscar. Hello. <laughs> Hey, they, they're married. She holds his Oscar every Oh, <laughs> you see what they did there was a homosexual joke. Oh. oh because you couldn't do that well, with the men is, in black. It is the Old West. <laughs> Look, we're fine as long as they don't have any pudding. <laughs> okay, and the setup is they're going into a room full of white former slave owners. And yep. he's and he's completely resistant to the idea of a disguise because he's a dick. Yeah, I mean you can you can have, um, you know, a oh. black lead character in an old west. Look at Django Unchained. Yeah. Yes. Where you yeah. you know address those you know the slavery post Civil War issues, but in this movie they just try to play it up for comedy and it just does not no, work you, at all. Because uh, you yeah, again you Whoa. can. I had a really bad idea. What if Will Smith donned a white face disguise? Yeah, but... Uh, with, <laughs> with the, no, no. With the kind of comedy they're going for in this movie, yeah. I would not be surprised if they pitched that idea. Yeah. But but he would leave that to the Wayans brothers to pioneer. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, yes, I, oh, God. I, I put out that, forgot about I want to say... Thank I, you for bringing and, the memory and, of that movie And up. I want to put oh. out... And I love you, honey, but you're listening to... I want to point this out. My, my wife actually really likes white chicks. Ooh. Okay. Does she? Oh, wait, wait, that hold, hold on, Salma oh, Hayek's oh. on screen. Everyone, everyone, can be we, quiet. Can we not talk about white chicks while Salma Hayek is on screen? Gotta look at that outfit. Holy Considering who I'm married, I'm never talking about white chicks ever again. <laughs> I like me Mexican well, okay, food. What can move, I say? Move, move, no, no, well, no, I didn't want to look at you anymore. God damn it, Will they're Smith. Not, they're not going back in that room for a little while now. Look it's, at those spider webs. Ooh, those. I wonder if there's going to be spiders coming up soon. Oh, is this who I think it is? Resident, yep. She's a, she is a joy to watch reading. Like when you find all this crazy shit that happens to her. 
<laughs> She's hysterical. Remember, she had that wonderful part in Star Wars Episode Three that got cut. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, um, she was in the episode. Wait, yeah, no, but it got cut. Yeah. Oh, is she the Padawan? Oh no, no, no she was. Who gets killed at the beginning? There's a part where they're supposed to include more senator senatorial meetings and bullshit like that. Oh, you know, stuff okay. that nobody cares about. Yeah. And George Lucas was like that too. Like, oh, let's cut. It. So you know, we might bash Lucas, but at least there's something there that made him realize. No, there I isn't. That was, a was tiny purely, bit. It was purely by actually going. Ah, oh, this movie's going on too long. But I don't want to cut this really interesting political stuff. But I got to because I'm dumb. <laughs> now, I, that's the thing. You it, when we when we eventually do Star Wars in here, you're gonna see. Woo! You're gonna you're going to hear me never give Lucas an inch. <laughs> Never, so you, you, because you, you, he doesn't Cameron, deserve Cameron, it. Cameron, bottle up that anger. Save it yep. for the Star Wars commentaries. Oh, they will come. I, I promise. They I just want to say he doesn't deserve to get an inch. He <laughs> Down the cheese. The I like the idea Fondue of the uh, the portraits. Uh, you the know, them dressed it up in the portrait and stuff. Marches. My eyes have seen the glory of the puffy line. Is it is it weird that the statue of Abe Lincoln is in like? A theater box setup, yeah. and then his head blows up. Yeah, <laughs> I think that was intentional. I think, I think that's Here we go. Is this guy's gonna the best save part. the movie? Coming up, boom! Happy there birthday, he is. Mr. President. <laughs> now, his character in the the television series, correct me if I'm wrong, but he was a dwarf. He was a dwarf, and for this movie, they made him just a, a cripple. Just think, if they had waited a little bit longer, we could have Peter Dinklage. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! Peter Dinklage is Doctor Loveless against against Mel Gibson and George Clooney. Oh, oh my oh. God! I just peed my pants a little right now. Wouldn't it have been funny if he was like he went up to like Loveless like? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, let's just throw out some. Let's just, let, let's play a game right now. Let's say what are some awesome roles that Peter Dinklage should have played. Regardless, throughout time and space, you know, you know, I won't, I won't say uh, Doctor Loveless because I love Kenneth Branagh in this role so much. But let's just I, say he I, I don't want anyone to replace him. I want to say no because I'm going to say this without having seen Jesse Eisenberg, and I think he's going to do a good job. But I'd love to see Dinklage as Luther. A Dinklage Lex Luther, that'd oh. be interesting, and not the goofy all real estate <laughs> Luther, <laughs> the cold-hearted. I'm going to kill you. Do that again. <laughs> the cold-blooded, blatantly racist. We have to have Oprah. Okay. Now, have now, Oprah. now, now, if you ever question oh. how good Kenneth Branagh is as, as an actor, watch this scene where they go back and forth between crippled puns and racist puns. This is just amazingly oh. bad and and great at the same time. And in a way, you actually kind of feel sympathetic for him. He's like. He's like, I get to do this. And I'm like, I'm a cripple, you asshole. Good God. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, I'm a, now, I love a good pun. I love puns. I think they're the best jokes in the world. I'm actually writing a Broadway production about puns. It's a play on words. But these, it's just like, good Lord. Good Lord. It's, they really... Went for it, <laughs> but but it, but it, I would argue that this does. Work I love his reaction here at the end when he's defeated. Yes, just, but oh, no, but the great. look on his face is just like I'm going to kill oh. you. And I want to point out that he was nominated for oh. worst supporting actor for this, which I call I call bullshit. I call bullshit because yeah, right? he's the only good thing in this movie. He's a, he's able to t he's able to take that these <laughs> horrible oh. scenes and terrible oh. dialogue yeah. and just Peter make it watchable. Peter Dinklage <laughs> is the Mad Hatter. <laughs> Actually, the funny thing is, he yeah. is the appropriate size. Yeah. Wait, which and Mad Hatter are we talking about? Just any any of them. Any of them. Like, I would rather see him as the Mad Hatter in uh, Tim Burton's Abomination of Alice. Oh, God. Oh, there's a movie. The Thunder Walk! Burr, burr, I like that movie, too. <laughs> uh. Let's do the Thunder Walk! Aww. Aww. Nice little identity mishap here that will come into play later. The little redhead was actually kind of cute. She is? Yeah. But going back oh, to Brana, Ooh, love it. <laughs> the reason why Brana so good is, is that you could. It kind of reminds me of Gina Gershon from Showgirls, and that is they both recognize how campy and stupid it is. Oh yeah. But they revel in it. They know exactly what movie they're in, and they and they enjoy it. 
But I think and Gina Kenneth Gershaw Branagh is such a professional that he's like, I know I'm in a shit movie. I'm still going to give it 110 percent because that be, that's what I do. Yes. That being said, I'd rather go to bed with Gina Gershaw. Just saying. You know, she's in her 50s then Kenneth too. Branagh. I know that is ungodly. And I, I Gina Gershaw. She also has a great ass, does she not? Yeah, she yeah. also has a great everything. Yeah. And, she, and her face, good God. So, so far we've talked Star Wars and great asses. <laughs> okay, so are they... I, I, because I've been reading most of the lines of dialogue, and I'm still not sure what this guy's plan is. Right now, all we know is that he's kidnapped a bunch of scientists. And he's racist. And, and, and he's racist. And they're on the hunt for the missing scientist. So he he's kid- a sharp dresser. So he kid- so he did. So he kidnapped a bunch of scientists. And he has them on an island to figure out what things would unite humanity if they ever invaded us. There we go. I want that hat and that beard. <laughs> it's gonna be a dick picture like in Big Lebowski. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was actually kind of cool. Did you see, like, the, the painting? How, with the gun was caught, mm-hmm. it was, like, like aiming it at him. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a nice little touch. Yeah, this is, this, again, this is a cool idea. Well, anything's cool with bailing and uh, mm-hmm. lingerie here, but... Yeah. The cool idea of, like, you know, the, the people hidden in the portraits is a neat kind of, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. visual, yeah. cool thing. And I will say this, though, when it comes to... Because Barry Sonnenfeld, he did win Worst Director at the Razzies for this. <laughs> Nobody can convince me that Sonnenfeld, in spite of the issues that I have with this film, that his direction was worse than what George Lucas did for the Star Wars. Just, just the laziness in his direction. Because this is at least visually interesting. Because mm-hmm. he was a, uh, you know, because he was a cinematographer, so he knows how to move the camera and how to make things look like oh, good. Uh, Whoa. Okay. Yes. We got we got a bit of Chinese ass. Now, does she belong to the pantheon of great asses, guys? I'm yeah. sorry, I'm sorry. I got, I will, are, we, are we watching a movie? Mm-hmm. <laughs> eh, it's, it's all right. God, that... That must have hurt. Dun, dun, dun. Oh! Oh, dude, that wasn't nice. He just let her get shot. That's hardcore. Oh, you such a badass, Jim West. He's a desperado. <laughs> He's a rough rider. No, you don't want nada. None of this? Six gun in this. Brother running this. Buffalo soldier. Yeah, that's like I told you. Now, any okay. damsel that's in distress, be out of distress okay. when she meets Jim West. Okay, okay no, n- now we're watching, uh, now we are watching Amadeus. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were watching the poor thing sequence with Sweeney Todd. Oh, watch out, there's not a breath. Just look at all those extras and all the costumes in the set. How much money is just being burned on the screen right now for a joke about Will Smith slapping on a woman's boobs? I've been wanting to slap Will Smith for years. Oh. <laughs> He's an annoying guy in interviews, you know that? I never really watched interviews. Oh my god, he's so full up his own ass. It's so <laughs> no, I think I think you're confusing him with his son. Yeah, they all got heads up their asses. Oh my god, his son. Let's not get started on that. Good lord. I use those wacky inventions. Oh wait, here comes some high. Fifty quiet. Shades of Grey. Oh. Mm. And I saw that movie. I'll tell you what. If Fifty Shades of Grey was set in the Old West, I'd go see it. You know, oh God! Merry that. Merry Christmas to you, Kevin Klein. <laughs> you slob motherfucker. Although you've cast petrify on my dick. <laughs> Rita Repulsa. Oh. Lovely Rita. You know what? Made? You know what? If Salma Hayek was in that upcoming Power Rangers movie, not the shitty ultra grim dark bullshit that's on YouTube, but a good <laughs> movie, and they were, and it was Salma Hayek as Rita. Oh like, my god, that would actually be really yeah, interesting twist on it, where she's like all feisty, and like I'm gonna get. And like and not, and not only that, but she couldn't be called Repulsa anymore. Mm-mm. No, but no, no, but they could call her Repulsa, but it would be like it would be kind of funny because she's not repulsive. See, uh, the point I was trying to make is that Salma Hayek's not repulsive. No. And she's no, tiny. she is not. Oh, she's like five foot two or something. No, Kevin Klein's just six foot seven. <laughs> you know, if you're gonna hang somebody, maybe you should tie his hands together. Yeah. <laughs> just now, an idea. Now you see, we've got white history here, so we can teach them how to hang. No, no, no. no I, that's, that's not, not going. That's there. not true. No, no, no. My family was never, never from the. Oh wait, my grandpa was from Kentucky. Oh shit. Wah, wah, wah. Wait, but isn't your family from Georgia? 
Or, and Florida and a couple other places. Aha! Uh-huh. <laughs> so we do have a southerner in our midst. I grew up in and, Florida. And you, your ancestry is... Irish and German. Oh, wait. Oh. We're talking, wait, wait, Irish German if we're talking ancestry, then <laughs> Irish and, and British. I'm Irish and We're all Irish. And we're also recording cheers. this. Hey, yeah, cheers. this is the weekend we before yeah. St. Patrick's Day. God, this scene just does not end. It just keeps on going. Oh, he's still talking? He's still talking. Still trying to be funny. I can't tell if all this was written and he just was too lazy to do anything else other than that was on the page, or if he's just improvising and failing miserably. And here we go. <laughs> You know, I, w- I will give this to the movie. It's a, a lot of really bad movies either feel their length or feel longer. Like, it just keep on going. This yeah. movie, for the most part, it's only like hour, 45 minutes long. Yeah. It goes by pretty quick. It goes by at a brisk pace, except, so, except for this scene. <laughs> so are we an hour in then? Because it feels like I've been here for three. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Has it been 20 minutes? I really don't know. 30? Went. Oh, it's funny because she fainted. Yeah, and she's she's got some curves. I mean this in the best way possible, but after watching Django Unchained, I have to say that Don Johnson and Jonah Hill are better racists. <laughs> 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 Do, don't you mean they play better racists? Yeah, let's go with that. Uh, let's go yeah, with that. Yeah, let's go yeah, with that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Don Johnson sues us. <laughs> we love you, Don. No, especially I, that song you did. No, I seriously did. Don Johnson is an underrated actor. Oh yeah, I'd agree with that. Like I saw the Damn. first. I, I, I can't I, this thing. Like um, I saw the first episode of that horrible From Dust Till Dawn TV show. Oh he, yeah, I forgot about that. He's amazing in that first episode. Really? He's awesome. Does he play uh, the sheriff? Yeah. This, oh, that's great. And then the then the show goes downhill when they introduce the new Gecko Brothers, mm. and you're like, oh man, I could really use a razor blade to open up a couple veins to get away from this. <laughs> <laughs> See, once again, Dust Till Dawn better with George Clooney. Wild mm-hmm. Wild West would yeah. have been better with George Clooney. Mm-hmm. We on the commentators do not promote suicide, so please don't cut up the list. <laughs> <laughs> our, our lawyers said we should we should read that. Well, ours did. And I disagree with that completely. I think we should promote <laughs> anything and everything. I want to promote Kenneth Branagh's charm factor right here. He just cranks it up. I want to promote it. Kenneth Branagh's beard. You know, oh my god, I took, um, at UNLV, I took the, um, from stage to screen class, we were talking about adapting theater uh-huh. productions to, to, uh, to film. Yeah. And our teacher, uh, um... He told me we were watching Henry V, mm-hmm. and we were talking about Kenneth Branagh, and he told me that the reason that Kenneth Branagh always has a beard and everything is because he has no lips. And I was like, what? That's, no, that's weird. Was this and now every time I look at Kenneth Branagh, I can't help but notice he doesn't have any lips. Was this Tylo? It was Ty- yeah, it was uh, Professor Michael Tylo, a great actor, yeah. great teacher. Nice guy. Told me this, and he almost, he kind of, in, in, in a way, he ruins... Looking at Kenneth Branagh for me because now every time I see him, I immediately look at his lips. I'm like, oh yeah, he, he doesn't have any lips. I wonder why he's Kenneth, staring at his Kenneth, lips. And Kenneth Branagh used to be uh, Nathan's number one stop in his spank bank. <laughs> that, this until is true. until this is I true. noticed that he doesn't have any lips. Now he has to settle for Salma Hayek. Yeah. <sighs> watch, look, they're gonna, they're gonna show him pretty quick. So, and watch it. You look you look right at his lips next time you see him. And they're non-existent. So I guess the Confederacy's back. <laughs> well, this is this is like oh, the look at him turn. Look, look at that, look at that total lack of lips. <laughs> this is like the Spectre version of the Confederates. They're even more racist. And also that legally the uh, Broccoli family can't use them. Oh my God, he has no lips. I love I love I love that the females have all weird names. Like her name is Munisha because she's the weapons expert. <laughs> 
That's something. Okay, you know that's, that, so that's that, that, something straight out of like Batman and Robin. Ex- that's no, why. That's I something. No, that's something straight out of sixties Batman. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God, no, 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 Batman movie. Okay, don't confuse sixties Batman with Batman and Robin. It's really hard. No, to. no, 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 no. It's. No, it's, because because, oh, because it's just it's just thirty years later is well, really uh, the only difference. Well, well, no, no, no. The the other difference is sixties Batman oh, knows what it's knows what it's it. doing. Oh, here comes a gag. Let's all laugh at the RCA joke. Yeah, let, let's laugh at the RCA joke. That's oh! you know the the age of audience they were going for with this movie never would have understood. Look, that I don't care. I don't give a shit about any joke. That was just a cute puppy. Yeah, that's, that's just a cute, yeah, puppy. It was a very cute puppy. But there's a huge difference between, is, between 60s Batman and Batman and this Robin. This is a cute. This is a cute gag. I like this gag. Because the one thing I like what Barry Seinfeld does is throughout his movies, he does have these wonderful gags of like things happening in the background while people are talking in the mm-hmm. mid or foreground. That's what I like about it. Again, that's something a cinematographer is great at. They're you know yeah. they're looking at everything on the screen. And then actually, that comes into discuss this idea of who makes better directors: film people who used to be editors or people who used to be cinematographers. Because well, well, didn't George Lucas used to be an editor? He was. Mm. Um, did, did I just end that conversation? Yeah, I'm sorry. you did. <laughs> well, but, 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 but but David Lean was a film editor, and he that's went true. on to make Lawrence that's Arabia: true. Bridge of the River Kwai. Or um. And cinematographers, Gordon Willis, only made one film, and that was the notoriously awful Windows. Okay, what about this? Who makes better directors? Editors, cinematographers, or writers? Oh, hmm? good. Actually, the funny thing is, I'd argue this when it comes to, to... Actually, when it comes to writers and actors, is that some of them, when they make their first movie, they put a lot of stuff into it because they're concerned that this is it. This is the only mm-hmm. shot they possibly can get. So there is, I find, there is a little bit more of a, a need. Like, for example, uh, what came out last year, Nightcrawler, that was, mm-hmm. what was the name? It was one of the and Gilroy games. Right? And how can, yeah. never, how can we never play that anymore? What? Nightcrawlers. Oh. <laughs> oh, and, and, and his brother as well for Michael Clayton. And those mm-hmm. are both really solid Oh, Michael Clayton films. is great. You just keep bringing up George Clooney, and I'm just thinking of the possibilities of what this movie could have been. And uh, tears running down my face. No, that's just me spitting on you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, because of the Batman and Robin comment? <laughs> yeah. It, 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 there's a world difference between Batman and Robin and Batman 66. A world of reason. <laughs> a world of difference. The main difference is 66 commits to it. Well, just be careful. You don't beat that dead horse we just passed. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Well, I didn't even see a dead wolf. What are you talking about? <laughs> this, is, this is an advertisement for Target. Here. Yeah. Speaking Target of Target, paid big money mm-hmm. for this advertisement right here. Oh, wasn't that what it was? This and this was the movie that inspired uh, our friend Keenan to work for Target. He saw it like, oh man, I got to work there one day. <laughs> and that's also what inspired this guy Nate we know to join Target. That's the tough thing about being a doing a big budget period movie like this is that there's very little room for product placement. Which you know, to do, which, you know, if you watch any Michael Bay movie, you know, it's filled with it because it's all set in modern day or the future. But you do something in the old west, there's What's really the... very few things Wait, you can okay. do. For product I, placement. I just like how essentially some high kidnapped like, oh, I care about this now. <laughs> Oh wait, this is the part when things get serious. So come on, guys. So it's bringing it down. Come okay. on, Will Smith. The, is the yucks. The yeah. yucks are over. He's showing his dramatic serious. stuff there. Yeah. Okay. And now, now imagine all, he's now, got range. Now imagine all this stuff done by Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> you see, he was nominated for Ali and the Pursuit of Happiness, but this is his real Oscar-worthy turn. Hey, in this movie, Will Smith can't can only not only do bad comedy. But bad drama as well. Yep. So here's the question I posed to you guys: Who does a worse job in this film, Will Smith or Kevin Klein? Will Smith. Yeah, Will Smith. I have. To Kevin say, Klein's well, just naturally a better actor than Will Smith. Yeah. And all, and also, I imagine when you're reading the script, Kevin Klein is meant to be the comedic ha ha character, and Jim West is meant to be the more serious character. Yeah. Kevin Klein's committing to what he's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Will Smith isn't. So just by that alone, Kevin Klein's winning. But the, but he's Will Smith. He just, he's just off the Fresh Prince. He was just yeah. on Men in Black, which is a big, huge comedy. He was very funny in that. So it's like, oh, we got Will Smith starring. He has to be funny because Will Smith 
Uh-oh. is funny. People want to see funny action hero Will Smith, and it doesn't mesh well when you've got the Kevin Klein character also trying to be funny. <laughs> is, <laughs> okay, why does she want? Okay, why does she want to go with them? Because she, she's trying to find. She's father. trying to find her father. Who have at they, the end, uh, Have they mentioned that at all? Yeah, they did. I guess when, like, when I they guess were on the stagecoach. Yeah. I think we were talking about Star Wars yeah. or something. <laughs> 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 they mentioned that on the stagecoach. Oh, they're going to Utah. They're going to Utah. So he's a Mormon spider thing? By way of Colorado territory? I heard you were from Colorado territory. Wait, did you say Colorado territory? Hey, aren't you we're, from Colorado we're territory? Go, we're going out California way. <laughs> Texas is not on the way to... Oh, my God. Where the hell? But they're in Louisiana. Oh, they are in Louisiana. That's true. My mistake. But that's not anywhere near Colorado territory. Wait, wait, wait. Here it comes. Right, Here wait, it comes. Did you say Colorado territory? Be quiet. Be quiet. There it is. Oh, oh yeah. Damn smoke! Get the steam out of the way! God damn it! I thought that was coming from his pants. Okay, that was funny. <laughs> that, that's, 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 that's a good joke. That's a good, that's a good visual joke. That's God damn steam! <laughs> you know what steam is good? Peter Gabriel. <laughs> you, you go. You go now. You go now. Oh, and here's the, the who has the bigger dick competition. Oh, she wants me. Oh no, she wants Wait, me. Wait, are we just, supposed to think that uh, that some Ice character is a thing for Will Smith? I guess. Well, that's the thing. Over the movie, we find out at the end, the man that she's that the scientist that's been kidnapped that she's been looking for isn't really her dad. It's her husband. So why? So you... these two characters have been really been fighting over this woman the entire time. When at the end, she didn't give a shit about either of them. So why didn't she say that in the first place? Because she was hoping to use their, I don't know, dicks to their attraction for her to her advantage. Basically, to think with their guns. Eh? Look, look, eh? he's got a funny hat. It's it's funny. It's funny. He's a funny hat. Cameron, did you see? He's got a funny hat. Why aren't you That's laughing? I'm sorry. I'm just kind of. I think I hit the wall where I'm just trying to. Fun- <laughs> oh, they're talking about they're function. talking about butts. It's funny. You don't tell women to make sandwiches, Buster. That's an old, tired, trope joke. <laughs> you piece of shit, sexist pig. I want that fest. Not his... That fest. Kevin Klein's fest. Awesome. He looks like the eighth doctor, kind of, in that. Oh my god, Kevin Klein is the doctor. As, yeah, as the doctor, not the eighth doctor. No, but he could have been. As an American doctor? Well, well he you know, could do British. <laughs> well, not only yeah. that, but I don't, he might have been one of the Americans up for the role. I mean, Tom Hanks is up for the role of the doctor. Yeah. Really? Well, when they did the the Fox uh, TV movie version one. Oh, okay. Where the, the only time the eighth doctor ever showed up, Tom Hanks was oh, up for it. Oh, that's interesting. But Tom Hanks turned it down. Okay. He said, um, look, if this happens... People are going to have your head if you don't get a guy who's British playing the Doctor. And those people include me. Is he a fan of the show? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because I, I know he's a big Star Trek fan mm-hmm. as well. I think he's a fan of anything science fiction fan. I know that Robin Williams was a big Doctor Who fan too. Yeah. Well, same thing for him. He was also a big video game. Mm-hmm. I'm sad to say was a big video game. So I, it's got kind of sad. I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, she just made out with Will Smith. I'm pretty sure she's not interested in you, Kevin Klein. Should probably I feel bad let for Kevin go. Klein. Okay, so if you were a girl, who would you rather make out with? Will Klein. Smith, Klein, Nathan? Yeah, oh yeah, Kevin Klein. No, I wouldn't even be if just a just girl. Like, hey, gun to your head. Who do you make out with, Smith or Klein? Klein. Klein, yeah. He's cuter. And he's funny. Mm-hmm. I have to... Oh, and if, he, and if he started speaking Italian, it'd go, it would oh, be... Oh, God. <laughs> But what about Russian? Have you seen uh, the new movie Cleese. he's in where he plays uh, Errol Flynn? No, I've uh, seen it. I've seen an ad of him standing there with like a drink or something. It's like one of the worst movie posters <laughs> I've ever seen. I'm di- I haven't seen it, but I'm dying to see it. Oh yes, yeah, because it looks great. Yeah. Now, and I, he looks exactly like an older Errol Flynn. <laughs> and I have to mention, it's like whenever I see Will Smith get dramatic and start yelling, I automatically think to that Fresh Prince of Bel Air episode about his, his dad. His dad. <laughs> Why don't he want me, man? You know, Why me? don't he want? Me? <laughs> it's interesting because I'm in the middle of moving right now, so uh, we've been packing up all our stuff, and today. Hannah, my fiance, she had uh, MTV on in the background, just playing like catfish was on or something. And it turns and it turns to uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. They show reruns of Fresh Prince, uh-huh. and it was the final episode. And so, as just on his background noise, so I'm so I'm occasionally watching it while I'm packing stuff up, Aww. and it was 
Oh, so even terrible. Hot than that. Oh wait, wait. There's something that proves our theory about about great Here essence. Comes. Oh, there we go. go. Yes. Oh wait. Turn around so we can see it again. <laughs> Oh, shut up, so she'll turn back around. Yeah. I will now. Oh, <laughs> oh what were we, what were we talking about? I was uh, talking about how the final episode Kevin of Klein, Fresh Prince. How sexy he is? Oh yeah, that's it. The final episode of Fresh Prince was terrible. It wasn't funny. The jokes were bad. The acting, you can tell they just like didn't give a shit anymore. And I was like, wow, why was this show ever popular? But then they have to show another episode after that, and because they go in order after the final episode, they show the pilot. So I'm kind of watching the pilot, and the pilot's actually pretty darn good. And I'm like, wow, this show went downhill fast. Because <laughs> watching the pilot, I'm like, I gotta watch this show. It's charming. It's funny. It's got the shredder in it. But yeah. you could tell, like, over the years, they just they just went com- way downhill. <laughs> it just did now, not give a shit anymore. How much better would the final episode have been if, if um, Uncle Phil had said, Tonight we dine on turtle soup! <laughs> Because you, you know that the guy who did who was yeah. Uncle Phil. Yes, yes. <laughs> now this is kind of a neat sequence with the the train chase. So that's what the you know because it's an old western. Yeah, because it's a western, a, you got to have a chase scene. Yeah, and, you just know, like Lone what Ranger. better than two trains? Yeah. Lone Ranger had a big train sequence. I, I will say, in Lone Ranger, not a good movie, but those last what fifteen minutes of the movie, the climax, that big final chase scene was the best thing I had seen that entire year. It was amazing. It was so good. It was so well done. It was exciting. The music was great. Well, that's the main selling point. And everything. It was like, sitting through those two hours leading up to it was yeah. almost worth it so, just to see those last 15 so minutes. So how many more logs do they have to go before they can uh, go back to 1985? Uh-oh. I think they're at the green logs right now. <laughs> oh, wait. Funny. What could this be? But that's not a spider, though. Oh. It needs to sprout at least four you know, more. It kind of reminds me of Spirit Tracks, you know, from Legend of Zelda. Well, I'll be <laughs> goddamn if that's not a giant fucking spider. Whoa. <laughs> look she, how happy he is. Well, look Kenneth how Kenneth so happy. She's not happy at all. What's her problem? She's very serious. She's doing her job right now. Now, how Would is you, there any room left in that train after those big arms have to she, fold in? That's why she wasn't smiling. See, Branagh's just small enough in his wheelchair <laughs> fit. to dodge it. She can barely move. Now, I love how. They're, they're about to fire on our heroes right now, and a little canyon comes out of nowhere and then disappears just as fast. Look at that. No, boom. Nowhere, and now it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love the badness of this movie, because it's just so bad. Seriously, it looks like he's raided the, the doctor's wardrobe. <laughs> I feel kind of sad for some because on one hand, you know, she it would have been it, she How does this little spicy thing and that's all cool. But then she goes, "What's going on?" <laughs> how long doesn't wh- work? How long after she made like because Desperado was like her big breakout thing, right? Desperado. Uh, it's, yeah, that, I think so. And yeah. from Dust Till Dawn. And from Dust Till Dawn. How that, long? That was like five minutes. She was in from Dust Till Dawn. But the thing is, so, yeah. so, so is, memorable. Oh my god. She's no, in five, seriously. Yeah, cool. she's in five minutes of it, but. She's also one of those moments you remember. Oh, absolutely. You, I will never forget the first time you, I saw it from Dust Till Dawn. Yeah, she, was actually, she was actually in a better film this year, very same year, called Dogma, which she mm-hmm. was yeah, Dogma. really funny. And the sad thing is when the Razzies nominated her for Worst Supporting Actress, they included her performance from Dogma. That's which, bullshit. It's mm. bullshit. Uh, That's how I Nice think. one. David's on a roll tonight with the Belches. Yeah, I do apologize, ladies and gentlemen. This is almost an Indian. No, I'm not sure what his plan was, because he brought the, the the rubber rope with him, but he didn't know the, the wire the f- was going to break. I don't what? know. Okay, does that... That's, physics work that way? It, okay. it does in this movie. No, I'll, t- uh, no, I'll tell you the only, ways, the only times physics works that way. If you're James Bond or Batman. Well, what are your so, well see, that's the thing. Wild Wild West, the original concept, the uh-huh. original show is essentially James Bond, but mm-hmm. in the Old West, yeah. instead of modern times. So, Which is what this movie should have had more of, is more James Bond in the Old West and less, let's try to ape off the excessive okay. men in black and just so, set it in the West. So, Loveless is a racist, and he has yeah. a mm-hmm. Native American working for him. Well, yeah. Because she's sexy. No, I mean him. him. Oh, him. <laughs> I thought you meant one of the females. Well, he's sexy, too. Not anymore. Maybe he's just racist towards black people. Well, they are Native Americans, and he is an American. So. There you go. 
What? what? <laughs> Look at that. It's, that's. I have in my side. That is oh. Royal Shakespeare Company acting right there. Was he? St I thought he was staring at her ass for a second. He was. He was. Yeah. I got a good feeling. That, that was that was the point of of the, the scene. Joke. That's the joke. <laughs> <laughs> I see you're all cracked up to be Munitia. She's horrible in this. That's yeah, sad. She's, she's pretty bad. But she's, she's fun but she, to look at. Yeah. <laughs> That's all that matters. Mm, I want you to grab my How balls. much you want to bet the plan hurts for Jim West instead? <laughs> now, how did she know that the, the pool ball did something like that? Because she clearly pressed it down on purpose. Oh my god, this is the worst fucking scene okay, now in the whole like, movie. Okay. This is worse than him almost getting hung scene. Oh, so I thought he was calling. And aren't they dashing? Ladies and gentlemen, we have exposition. Right now, they look like steampunk Shakespeare. You know, if there's one thing Kevin Klein does well in this movie, it's exposition. He's like the main exposition guy, and he can he can do it pretty well. This is, see, this dialogue, this scene is so horrible, but Kenneth Branagh makes it watchable. Blackable? Yeah, Blackable? This. And he's talking about how he builds mechanical okay, pleasure I, machines. It's, Jim, oh God. He say, say stuff like, uh, Jim Wes, I can't wait to see you're blacked out. <laughs> oh no, they, they hearken back, in, in the climax move, they hearken back to the yeah. crippled versus racist puns. So, um, do you think at any forth. point like, Kenneth Branagh is going to do an impression of our friend Brian Lee and call uh, Will Smith the Jigaboo? Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, 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 maybe. I love, I love his laugh here, too. Listen Can to we? his laugh. Oh, yeah. Kill what? Uh, I oh, wait, he's going laugh. to Spider Canyon. I wonder what they're going to have there. I, so, I Kangaroos? I he just tells him this e their e his evil plan. This entire scene. This is the, the why does his, why typical does his, bad guy trope. Why does his bullhorn <laughs> have to look evil like everything else? Well, because it has to. This is one the of those literal-minded films. And that's where Brian Lee uh, is all in good fun, even though you did say that. <laughs> yeah, do you want to explain what happened with Brian? That he, okay. Was oh. it that he was drunk or something? No, I don't know. I don't know whether he was drunk or sober, but we were talking on Skype, yeah. and um, football was on. Yeah, following the Philadelphia Eagles. Yes, it was. A, that's yeah, the Philadelphia Eagles was a team, and I don't know what happened, but some somebody on a team. I'm going to assume it was the opposing team of the oh, Eagles. It was a black a, player. Scored a touchdown. He did a, um, a little dance. He did a little dance, <laughs> and um, <laughs> out of nowhere, <laughs> nowhere. And especially surprising because it's Brian says, oh, look, he's doing a little jigaboo. <laughs> now, to Brian's defense, he didn't know. He didn't know what that was. He thought it was... I would a, hope not. He thought it was a type of dance. Uh, of course. <laughs> but it, it, it's just like that scene. It, it's just like the porch monkey porch, porch porch scene too. in Clerks. Too, oh, okay, yeah, okay. Where he thought it... He, didn't he thought it meant something completely different yeah. than yeah. that, yeah. Of course. Hey, hey, I'm bringing it back. I just yeah, <laughs> of course. No, of course, once he realized it, he's like, oh, no, no, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Do you think this is somewhat of a reference to North by Northwest in a way? I sure hope not, because it's doing a shitty job of it. <laughs> what a canyon out of nowhere. There are a lot of canyons. The can geography in this movie makes no sense. Well, come on. Wouldn't you want to have a cornfield right next to a canyon? Wait, why, why did they, they explode? explode? <laughs> there are two pieces of metal okay, apparently filled with gas. Okay, tell me this isn't just a huge shit joke. Oh, wait, wait. Something's funny. Something funny's going to happen. Something funny. Is oh. You know what? Oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ha! Ah, he sneezed on him. That's this hilarious. Is, this is a shit joke, isn't it? They, oh, they, man. Are they in a giant vat of shit? <laughs> I think it's Clay. Clay fighters. Clay, Clay fighters. And again, Kenneth Branagh comes in to save. God, she, can we just pause it on her face? Because mm. it's fucking gorgeous. Mm. Isn't this kind of like a remake of Men in Black? If you think about it. Well, yeah. I think it's got all the same fucking people. Yeah. This, this line that he delivers is my favorite part in the entire movie. 
coming out. He just trims the charm factor up. Yeah. Watch this. <laughs> See, that's great. I, f I fucking love him in this movie. He's so good. Mm. I'm so, oh, mm. God, so Jesus. Jesus. Uh, wackiness. Why are you talking that way? <laughs> oh, he's losing his marbles. And again, this is where the movie, it hits all those, you know, uh, story point beats. This is the point where, you know, the two characters who are, you know, butting heads the entire time. Like, in a little bit, it's where they kind of come together and realize that, oh, they need each other. Mm -hmm. They want to help each other. You know, but they have to reach the point of, you know, wanting to kill each other first. We're watching a movie. I just, yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Yeah, I just realized like, this that. is if, a if, movie. If it's you, just not a good one. Exactly. If you break down the film, story point by story point, it hits all those points perfectly. But everything surrounding it is oh just my, such shit. Oh my god. I don't well, care. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I don't mean like what you just said, Nathan. I mean <laughs> this. Yeah, exactly. It's, but you want to know what you are going to care about. Um, those um, Shakespearean steampunk bullshit things run the next, that was on the clay with them, right? They're spotless. Uh, they're, yes, their clothes are completely clothes are drenched all... in mud. And their collar, well, there's, oh, no, a little, a there's a little bit on the back. Yeah, a little. Cameron, okay. It's stainless yeah, steel. Yeah, but look, look, your point is void. Um, okay. look, at Will's, look at the top of Will Smith. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like Where's nice the and one shiny. without the, uh, the stuff? I guess he sneezed it all off. He, sne bad. he sneezed it yeah. all off because that was, that was funny. Uh -oh. Did he just try to do an Enziguri? <laughs> no, no, no. I don't know if that was in a helicopter. No, no, no. That was a shining wizard. Jesus. That general joke. Oh, that story about how Justin wanted to, to, to give a shining wizard to that one guy. That, it's funny because his face is next to his penis. Yeah, pee pee. Um, could you blow me while you're down there? <laughs> well, while you're down there anyway, you're not going anywhere. Yes, th thank you for repeating that. This is about to fart. Unzip. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh! <laughs> One there next is Hilarious. broken. Probably. No, because of comedy. Yeah, at least they're in that muck, so then their their clothes can get a little clear. Yeah, because we all know that in order to get really heavy clay off your clothes, you just need to take a quick dip, dip in water. Well, of course. Of course, yeah. It's movie logic. Do you think there's any logic in this movie? No. <laughs> but that's why it's movie logic. Mmm, <laughs> something smells good. Mm -mm. That, that, that actually, Gila honestly, monster. that actually does kind of look good. Would I'm you like, you, you like to eat Gila Monster? It's deep fried. Mm. It looks well, deep no, fried, but he just roasts it But, but you know what it looks like? It looks like, um, no, grilled, <laughs> to me it looks like grilled teriyaki chicken. Oh, that's a good point. And then again, you know, you do eat turds. I have video put yeah, it. That's true. <laughs> I don't deny I don't deny it. Let's you, let's let's not get get back in the silo, please. Have you, let's let's <laughs> only talk about silo. Have you guys have you guys ever eaten gator before? Yeah. That's his I really haven't. I've, I've heard it's good. Oh, it's, it's all right. It, it, it tastes like a tougher it, chicken. Yeah, it's tougher. Okay. It's really tough. But that's what it's shark really cool. is bland. I not had shark. Yeah. It's bland. Octopus is real good. Yeah, octopus is good. Calamari is good. <laughs> oh yeah. Calamari is pretty good. And all this because of a Gila monster. Yep. So now we just gotta go to the desert, find ourselves a Gila monster, and, and do it. He a... actually included the line! <laughs> it's an important plot point coming right here. Remember this for later. They felt like this. Whoa, no, 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 no. <laughs> Wouldn't this movie have been better if the chief from One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest showed up? I know he's okay, dead, dead, but okay. it would have been good. It's not this movie's fault, but right now I'm being reminded of a much better fireside chat in Django Unchained. Oh, yeah. good, good point. God, Christopher Vol 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 Vol
Oh wait, I think something's gonna they, happen. They really are the Smith and Klein of their times. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. We got an obvious green screen. Look at that blue screen. That is that is so, glorious. So I would say they're more the Smith and Muse. <laughs> so so Cameron, tell me, what's gonna happen with this green screen? Um I think we're gonna see a Thanagarian snare beast. Oh, oh looks like that high powered magnet just came in handy. That is convenient. God, that's got a his his ass is chapped. <laughs> now, white people, great, great, you oh. white people, great. Now you have me thinking about Salma Hayek's ass again. And no, we're not going to go see it again in this movie. Let's rewind it. <laughs> see Kevin Klein's um, ass. You don't rewind DVDs, okay? You rewind okay. VHS. Tapes. Okay, let's God. get back. <laughs> let's chapter search back. Now you Come seen on. you seen Life Life is a House, right? Yeah, you seen I Kevin is you seen Kevin Klein's ass in that? How would you rank, rank it? Do you? Okay, um, I just want to say this. I don't care what his ass is, you know, what his ranking of his ass is, because I've seen Salma Hayek's ass tonight, so there's That's no true. ranking. There's no, nowhere close. It's yeah. Apples and oranges. It's apples and not Salma Hayek's ass. What fruit would you compare Salma Hayek's butt to? <laughs> A nice, firm peach. <laughs> yum, yum. And here comes John Peter's wet dream, right there. Oh, God, here we go. It's glorious. Now you'd think he would have saw them. <laughs> yeah, no shit. He's right there in front of their face, but apparently he, he doesn't nope. see them. But yes, we got a giant spider. John Peters was obsessed with making a film with a giant spider in it. And he finally got it. Now I gotta say, that's a that spider looks cool. Uh, I'll say it. That is a neat that was a really cool design. Now, do you think if there had been a sequel, we would have, we would have gotten a giant polar bear? <laughs> Maybe. They should, what, Wild Wild Antarctica or something like that? No, it's still in the West. You mean it goes so west that we get to Russia? No, it's still Wild Wild West. You that call was it Wild Wild South? I don't know. Let's remake Wild Wild West, but they go after Vladimir Putin. <laughs> America. And the Ricky Tink little train. This is a neat little idea, having yeah. the gun store, like, yep. you know, simple Let's stuff like up. that. Totally works. You know, Although it does remind you of the Men in Black scene when they went to go get, like, little guns, like the noisy cricket yeah. and But such. no, it's nothing like that, okay? Because this is in the Old West. Oh, okay. It's completely different, David. That okay? is true. Yeah. <laughs> you remember the desert when we saw that little wasp destroy the train? We make a giant oh. robotic wasp! <laughs> You're right, he does move in on people's faces a lot. <laughs> he likes it. It's a way of telling the audience, he came up with an idea. I mean, generally that's what they do, and I have to admit that when it comes to certain films, I'm not a big fan of the cutaway. Well, technically, if they're sticking to what they do best, isn't Kevin Klein's whole thing of doing best wacky in adventures? Inventions, yep. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm just saying, there's a uh, there's a big hole in your logic. Uh, West. It's a nice callback to the Toronto. original uh, theme song. Oh, yeah. from the te television oh, show. Wait. I used to watch that show all the time when I was I, a kid. Um, how many uh, shows, uh, movies that are based on old shows, actually do use the theme song in the opening credits? Because um, even Star Trek, which did use the um, yeah. classic TV show, show theme, mm. didn't use it till the end. Yeah. Wait a uh, minute. I don't know. That's a good question. Isn't this a, the Lone Ranger plot involving trains and stuff? Yeah, but these trains just get blown up. Wait, isn't there also... <laughs> wait, hold on. Is it all, I'm not even joking. Isn't this also kind of the plot of one of the Zorro movies? I think from now on, Hollywood, if you're going to do like another Western, <laughs> don't involve anything in, like with trains and such. Well, I mean, how, what else are you supposed to do? Well, I mean, to the point where... Not, Horses and trains and stagecoaches. That's, yeah. that's all you well, got I to mean, work with. Well, I mean, not to the point where it's so intrinsic to the plot. Like, you can still have a train in it, but not yeah. have it be, like, the centerpiece of the plot. You know, like how True Grit, they, there was a train in True yeah. Grit, but nothing... You know, it's like, we got to get on that train. There's another face move in. Good guy. Oh, yeah. Unforgiven doesn't have a train in it. Yeah, it does. It does? Yeah, the, when, the, the part where now English Bob gets to Little Whiskey. He's on a train. And they're thought, shooting. And they're shooting no, the, the, no, he was on the stage. No, he was on the train, then he got on a stagecoach. There's a part where they're shooting pheasants on the train. Uh, I gotta say, these effects are really good. Yeah. These, these I, hold up pretty well. I give it to the film. 
But when you've got that much money, well, Run, a, after you've made Men in Black, you, you've got enough money to do whatever the fuck Run, you want. Run, it's a Thanagarian snare beast! Because <laughs> I remember, I want to compare contracts. When I saw Men in Black in the theaters back in 97, mm -hmm. everybody was, it, there was packed, everybody was laughing Oh, yeah, ass me too. Off. It was great. I saw this in the theaters, summer of 99. It was me and maybe a couple of other people. Yeah. It was dead. You know, what's it, the first weekend? No, this oh, yeah. was like maybe the second weekend. Oh. Whoa. Now, bear in mind, I'm from like a small town. Wait, why is still... he wearing a German helmet? <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the extended modus and national have... Nazi fun week. I have decided that the South also hates the Jews. <laughs> and that I am German. No. The Aryan culture is going to take over you, Jews. Yeah. Alliance. The Loveless Lo Alliance? I would love. <laughs> I'd rather be the Love Lace Love Alliance. Alliance. Mm -hmm. Should, shouldn't he call it the Love Lions? The Love Lions. <laughs> I love Lions too, the so majestic. I love that uh, President Grant really just keeps us cool. And like, you know, I'm gonna That's supposed I'm to gonna be play it cool. And, well, you know, it's because it he's drunk, <laughs> you see. <laughs> yeah. I have to say that makeup at the beginning is so convincing, I'm still wondering if that's supposed to be um, Kevin Klein. Well, he does play. Both roles. He is? He really yeah. does play both yeah. roles? Yeah, he, he, play, he plays yeah. Artemis Gordon and President Grant. I didn't know that's that. Why, that's why I can do the switcheroo. Didn't they do that in the show as well? When one guy was pretending to be Grant? Was that it? Or I don't know about Grant, but the, the actor, I can't remember his name, who played uh, Artemis Gordon so was the would, would play the role that he was supposed to be dressing up as Are as you, well. Yeah. You're positive that he's playing both roles? Yeah. Yes, he is. Yeah. Oh, this also reminds me of Fierce Creatures, where he played both the father and the son, and as the father, he's obviously doing a take on Rupert Murdoch. So that's whenever I see this, I just keep thinking of Fierce Creatures, which I know John Cleese hates, but I, I think the film's okay. Man, now I want to watch A Fish Called Wanda. <laughs> Are we going to the Wild Wild West? Are we going to the Wild Wild West? From his mother, Irene. She told him, come on home and stop all this foolishness. Wah, wah. Oh. Jeez. And roll credits. Great now, movie. Now, shouldn't Great the movie. fall have killed him? And now, he, yeah, see, now he's going to regenerate <laughs> into a Peter Davison. He's going to be the fifth Jim West. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if he regenerated into Forrest Whitaker? Just a... <laughs> That's random. <laughs> I, don't know, actually, I was just imagining a better actually, you know actor. What, if he's going to regenerate into any uh, any um, any black actor, I'd kind of prefer it to be Idris Elba. Oh, Idris Elba is great. Because but Forrest Whitaker's ghost dog. He, Idris Elba is <laughs> Luther. Oof. We're gonna have ourselves a battle. For... Uh, a... Forrest Whitaker was Idi Amin. Idris Elba was um, Balder. Forrest Whitaker was Charlie Bird Parker. Idris Elba. Ran the Pacific Rim operation. Forrest Whitaker was the football player in Fast Times at Richmond High. He Id was. I forgot about that. Idris Elba <laughs> has a huge cock. Ooh, well, he's, got, he's got you there. Forrest Whitaker was the butler. Idris Elba's Idris Elba. Forrest Whitaker has a fucked up eye. Forrest Whitaker Idris was. Idris Elba doesn't. <laughs> Forrest Whitaker was in Battlefield Earth, so I mean. Idris Elba was. <laughs> <Idris Elba wasn't. laughs> oh, we got our Jesus figure. Yep. Man, that that's so symbolic. We, we needed a Christ ah. moment. Every is this the first? Wait a minute. Is this the first film where we've had a Christ moment? There had to have been one in Solo. Oh yeah, when, the he, was getting, when he was getting butt fucked. Oh yeah. <laughs> so you, what are you trying to say? What happens to Christ in his time? Oh man, that mithril vest that really saved me. <laughs> You're full of surprises, Master West. I was actually just joking. I had no clue it actually was the Mithril yeah, Vest. That's why he's still alive. I just expected, like... But how did he survive the fall? Because he's Jim West. Yeah. Desperado? Rough, Rough Rider. No, you don't want Nana? Okay, for a spider that looks a lot like a cockroach. Whee! Look at that. Going. He is earning his paycheck. I so love going great. on the Mary Gobrana. Is that some scenery in Kenneth Branagh's teeth? Because he is chewing the fuck out of it. And I love every minute of it. Loveless Land, Mexico. Otisburg. Otisburg. <laughs> it's just a little thing on the corner, boss. So why would he sell it to Great Britain? 
The original 13 colonies. Yeah. That's the idea, is that all... All the land that America has taken from, you know, other places, except the Native Americans, which is weird, uh, all go back to their original owners, except for Loveless Land up there, which includes us, Las Vegas. We're in Loveless Land right but why now. But why does he want to go north? He's a fucking know. Yankee! That <laughs> son of a bitch! Yeah, I know, After Earth sucked. <laughs> that was totally the look on his face. Okay, what would you rather do? Watch this or After Earth? This. This. Because <laughs> Barry Sonnenfeld, even at his worst, is far better than M. Night at his worst. You know what? I, I don't know why I want to watch this now. It just came to my head. I want to watch Diner right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll bring it in. And yes, I did. That's a really random movie. I want to point <laughs> I out. I don't know why, but David, wild, I don't know. Wild because West. for some reason, David mentioned Barry Sonnenfeld. That made me think of. Uh, oh, I said Sonnenfeld? Huh? Uh, no, his name's Levinson. I know, but his yeah. first name's Barry. Isn't the Barrys, it? yeah. Yeah, so he would play Barry Sonnenfeld. Oh, Barry Levinson. Oh, Diner. Oh, it's actually funny. It it's funny you mentioned that. I did these these little film grammar series, right? And one yeah. time I was mentioning Men in Black when it came to foreground, midground, background. Uh, when it came to comedy, I said Barry Levinson, and this guy yeah. gave me shit going, it's supposed to be Johnny Field. You claim to be an expert, but you got the name wrong. <laughs> and I, excuse me I for confusing my berries. Jesus Christ. This guy that. wasn't some kind of internet troll, was he? <gasps> no, no, but Son of a bitch. Was, there aren't those out there. If I remember there? right, the comment went, now, now, now. Oh, God. <laughs> uh oh. And even though he can't, he couldn't type shaking his finger, you totally knew that he was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, now, guys, guys, guys. Oh, God, Salma. <laughs> I, ha I have to hand it to Kenneth Brona. He, he can't be that bad. Look at the dress she's wearing. <laughs> Look at the dresses they're all wearing. Look, I do not like this shot because it's not close enough on Salma Hayek. <laughs> I just realized the film is almost over. Oh, my God, it's almost... What the fuck happened? Oh, we were talking about Star Wars and Batman and um, uh, <laughs> Brian saying a racist epitaph. But, but it's like this happened, and I don't, I don't care. I mean, uh -oh. it's uh oh, oh Jesus, here it comes, Big Willie style, Big Willie fucking style. You know they should have had. Uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff in the background doing the music for him during this dance. No, no, they should have had um, Alfonso Ribeiro. <laughs> now, if this was me and I was doing this scene, I would have done like this. You would have, you would have dropped your trout when immediately shown off your dick. No, I would have had this. I would have had Kenneth Branagh look at her and go like, "She's black killer." Yeah, no, he's, he's a racist. He, he's supposed to be a racist in this let's movie. Let's so why is he turned on by a, a black chick? Let's see that, but. See, I think that's the thing. You can be racist, but pussy's pussy. That's true. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you that. <laughs> you both. See, you know, you, can, you, you know that Kenneth Brown was like, this is so stupid, God. but I'm a professional. I'm going to do my job. And he gives it his all. Oh, God. Wait, hold on, hold on. Why is he so into these women when he doesn't have a dick? Maybe because he doesn't have a dick. Yeah, but he, he he really needs to compensate for something, because he literally does not have one. <laughs> oh yeah, oh. and it's getting his now. When they've heard that. You know, and, and Walsh, he's good. I love him in Blade Runner and Blood Simple. You know, we need you. We need you, Deckard. We need the Blade Runner. <laughs> we need the Blade Runner special to dress up like a magic. woman and do a strip tease to a <laughs> to a crippled man. He doesn't even have a dick. <laughs> now we want to point out. Do you know how suave <laughs> Kenneth Branagh is? He had both Emma Thompson and Helena Bonham Carter within the span of a year. Hmm. You know, just because her boobs are on fire doesn't necessarily make him still, a man. And also, you can still <laughs> shoot the guy. Like, oh, there's fire? I don't care. I still see your head. Hey, that's video game logic. <laughs> oh, you so know, I'm surprised the video game didn't come out for this movie, because 
fighting a giant spider, that is like the mother of all boss battles this, right there. This potentially could have been this was this movie came out in like ninety three or so. This would have been a 99. great Super Nintendo game if it came out in ninety three. Oh, if it yeah. came out in ninety three, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, like a, and also, um, I don't know if you know this, but right now this isn't Will Smith. Dress up a drag. That's actually his stand-in, uh, Joni Lorer, who would go on to be Aww. China, <laughs> who now is currently a washed-up porn star. Oh yeah. And the reason why she should never go in the Hall of Fame is but because she of that. Yeah. See, now he does believe in the wacky guy's inventions because he got to dress up as him. I don't know. Hey, once you dress up as, uh, <laughs> drop, dress up as a woman once, wait, I'll how do they? The world of wait, wait, wait. How do they get back on the spider so quickly? How do they make that uh, so quickly? Because. It's okay. This reminds me of um, that uh, one MST3K cave dwellers. <laughs> Remember, hey, I killed a deer, tanned its hide, and then turned its bone and skin into this. Huh? You know, and the same year he was in my favorite film of, 90, of that of the year, The Iron Giant. I remember Walsh. Oh, he did Iron Giant. Oh, yeah. I love that movie. Yeah, you know the part of the beginning with the 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 the, the, the captain and the mm-hmm. ship crashes into the giant. Oh, okay. And he's the one who fucking called Kent Manley. Fuck you, Orville and Wilbur. <laughs> now, this is Major Rights again. It would have been this. Shit! <laughs> Which is a better movie? Drop some weight. Throw Will Smith off. <laughs> what if this is John Lovitz in the role? We need more speed. <laughs> Get off! John of Lovitz my is Artemis now. Um, was. I don't know why I'm asking this because it has nothing to do with the movie. Was this this was um after uh, Goldeneye came out, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because they're about to repeat the Goldeneye scene. Except shitty. Yeah. There we go. Look at those goggles. They're so goofy. That's right, buddy. We're flying this ship. And now, right now, he's imagining he's the Red Baron, who won't exist for another <laughs> couple decades. Oh, are we going to do an E.T. reference here? Might as well. That's a big-ass moon. Fuck. Uh, uh, that was just cringe-inducing jokes. Not even the Oscar winner hey, can save, you know, hey, save these you know, jokes. You know what would look great... Fighting a giant spider, Superman. Yeah. <laughs> I'd watch that. That I'd watch that movie. That oh, yeah. or Superman <laughs> fighting a polar bear. Can you imagine? Can you imagine like John Lovitz now as the studio executive. Okay, guys, we're gonna make Wild Wild West. We're gonna have oh, a it's, big it's spider. It's, it's, fu- it's funny you mentioned. It's, it's, funny. it's funny you mentioned John Lovitz after I make another Kevin Smith Superman uh, reference because Kevin Smith's yeah. not a fan of John. I'm Lovitz. a cocksucker. <laughs> Obama is taking all my money. Therefore, you're not getting <laughs> any money. That's Mr. a really Smith. good John Lovitz impression. <laughs> you, you need to listen to this podcast. Suck po- my dick. You gotta listen to this podcast. It's yeah, all about how John Lovitz screwed over Kevin Smith. Oh, really? It's oh, great. Kevin Smith and Ralph Garner. It's on his Hollywood Babylon, but they uh, did mm-hmm. a separate one called um, The John Lovitz Situation. <laughs> I'm a douchebag. The heroes are here. <laughs> that random town in the middle of nowhere will eventually be used as the town in Thor. Which is another random town in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I, I'm so... Hey, look at these visuals. These are cool. I feel like I'm alone in this, but I think that Thor 2 is a lot better than the first Thor. I haven't seen Thor 2. You know, I like them both. For me, they're both right, uh, right on the same level. They're, they're both okay. good, but I have, not great. I have to admit, I do, I do like Thor. But, this <laughs> so, sounds so stupid, but actually kind of made me fall in love with the movie... <laughs> For the end credits, and I'm not being sarcastic. It's like how beautiful the you know seeing the galaxy and the oh, music that. playing. It was like, oh See, my god, this is I, wonderful. I, I, I've already told, I've already, I think I've told Nathan this, but my problem with Thor was I didn't get, I didn't understand oh, yeah, any yeah. of the stakes because when you go into Asgard, you never see any of the citizens so, except during the coronation. So it's kind of like Naboo. Yeah, you never see any of the citizens of Naboo. Yeah. So who gives a shit? Oh when, yeah, they, they when they're dying okay. without oh, space. Oh, and, and also, good point. Good point. And also, I mean, I found this out by talking to a lot of people we know. It seemed a lot more people we know loved the Asgard stuff. I hated the Earth stuff, and I was the reverse. I loved the stuff on Earth. That's what got me invested in the movie. I liked it both. I, I think they both worked in their Uh-oh. in their own way. But yeah. like you said, not being able to see the citizens at all yeah. and they're seeing that's their what, plight see, makes sense. I guess that's that. what I liked about the second one. Is you saw the citizens. Mm. 
And the fact that it was just essentially a buddy cop movie. And I, I love the whole heist yeah. scene. Like, it, where the, the part of the movie where it becomes an episode of the A Team, I thought was great. And it has that great, <laughs> that has that great joke where um, Loki turns into Captain America. That was That's great. That's great. Best cameo. Best cameo. Okay, is that, is that the guy from earlier? Which guy? No, it's not. Never mind. I thought it wasn't. You know, when it comes to these silent badasses, I remember it was like this, you had Darth Maul. For me, I was all about the Headless Horseman. Now, that was a badass that year. Hey, remember when uh, Tim Burton did this joke funnier in the first Batman movie? <laughs> oh, God, I love that bit. Yeah, you remember when they did the joke perfectly in Raiders of the Lost Ark? Yeah. And everyone just aped off of it for decades to come. <laughs> I think Burton aped off it the best. Where'd the other guy come from? I don't know. There we go. <laughs> All these people just coming out of nowhere. Shouldn't you be, you know, Shouldn't manning the mechanical spider? Yeah, I mean, this is, um, <laughs> as advanced as this is for this time, it's still in the 1800s. Someone needs to be watching the engine. Really? This is one of those where you can tell they had no idea what the hell to do. There's like, just just put in a fight sequence. We need we need some action, you know? And you know, I'm all for giving handicapped oh, people on. jobs. Oh, Did he just seriously just say, <laughs> no, no more Mr. Mr. Knife? Knife. Fuck! Yeah. I'm telling you, puns everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, it. the film is now officially broken Cameron. No, it broke me a while ago. <laughs> like, the only thing that, ever, that has really ever brought me back in is like, oh, look, there's Salma to ease my pain. <laughs> and then when she's off screen, and I slowly, slowly begin to lose it again. The guy's got a railroad spike He's in got his a spike in his and then, head. And then he hits him with a shovel and goes, can you dig it? Can you dig oh, it? Oh, why didn't he? Oh, see, you should have written well, this movie. Yeah, yeah but then I should have won more screenplay. Yeah, but then, it, but then the cat, then the uh, Jim West should have been um, Jim uh, should have been a Booker T. Oh, can you dig it, fucker? Now here comes the, the fuck? most illogical part of the entire movie. I will buy what? the futuristic stuff in the old west. I will buy the giant mechanical spider. Is this supposed to be a? But steam? this guy coming up, so, he's. A, is he a Terminator? There, see, that's the thing. He's, he oh, that he's, was really bad. He appears to be super strong. He has a metal head. You don't really know what's up with him, but something's weird. But you know what? Still better than the Robocop remake. And ladies, <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen... No, no, look at this coming up. He, okay, he's beating on okay, him. Okay, you know what? Still, that's He's beating on him. Nothing's happening. That but, should dent his head. Yeah, but wa watch what happens. He does all this shit. And this he's is not pushed Michael back. Burton. He's getting pushed back. And watch what happens. L l watch how he defeats this bad guy. He prays to Jesus? Just watch this. And... Nice teeth. What the f... See? Wait, what, 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 what happened? What, what? I don't know! It's like, it's like there was an entire fight scene that like got cut out, or got cut wait, for time. Wait, what the fuck happened? Wait, I don't what? know! I don't know. Did he get electrocuted on something? I don't know. What did he get electrocuted on? I don't know. What the fuck? Makes no fucking sense. <laughs> at now least, the, okay, this is cool. okay, this Cameron, is cool. you don't like giving George Lucas an inch, but at least when some of the characters died in the Star Wars films, you knew what the fuck happened. No, you didn't. I'm not going to give him anything. You did. No. Nathan, did you no. know what happened to Qui-Gon Jinn when he died? Well, he got, yeah. yeah, he got a saber to the belly. But why didn't he turn into air? See? Like, I'll, I'll destroy it. I'll still, I'll still destroy it. <laughs> Because they didn't learn the powers from Yoda or something. Because he didn't allow but, himself because, to because, Lu because Lucas forgot about it until he <laughs> shot it. And went, oh, well, I could go back and reshoot it, but that would take some fucking effort. Oh, wait, here comes a bad No, I do like this. this. This is neat. See, another cool boss battle that would have worked in a video game. Yep. Now, what would have been funnier if he his head hit the... <laughs> Ding. <laughs> I assume at some point they explained what happened to the lower half of his body. And then when Kublu he got blown off while fighting the Civil War. That's and how did he survive? Because he's Kenneth Branagh. Because look at the technology of the time. Of course they could save him. Waka waka. <laughs> okay, um, I'm pretty sure that's a <laughs> gag from Army of Darkness. Yeah. <laughs> now, what if Sam Raimi directed this film? That oh, would have, oh, Sam Raimi, Wild Wild West would have been okay, amazing. I can tell you what would have happened. And I know that this might depress me. Bruce Campbell as Jim West. No, not Bruce Campbell as Jim Russ. Bruce Campbell as Loveless. Oh! I can see that. As Loveless or as Gordon? Yeah, just, Campbell would make an arm as Gordon, too. Campbell could play any of these he roles. Play, he could play all three of the roles, and it'd be yeah. amazing. 
I can't wait for that new Evil Dead TV show, by the way. Ah, uh, I don't know. You want to know why? I okay. really didn't like the last movie. I love the last That's, movie. Uh, Which last movie was this? The last Evil Dead. The last Evil Dead. The reboot remake. Oh, I liked whatever it. Fine. It was. It was, I, 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 I was I, not a fan. My my rankings of the Evil Dead movies now are Evil Dead Two, Army of Darkness, Uh-oh. Evil Dead, and then the the original Evil Dead. The last. I mean, I like the original Evil Dead a lot. I love it, but I think. The reboot, the, I think the sequel, let's Uh-oh. call it what it is, it's a fucking sequel, is better than the original Evil Dead. Those, those mm. girls it's not, it's nowhere it's, near, it's the, better made, I'll give it that. <laughs> it's, nowhere ne- I'll say it's nowhere near as good as Evil Dead 2, because that's like the cool Oh, movie. Evil Dead 2 is amazing. Evil, De- Evil Dead 2 is Sam Raimi's masterpiece. There is no topping Evil Dead 2. <laughs> Sam Raimi has been unable to... to uh, yeah. So <laughs> anyways, Wild Wild West. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, you just you the one. You, I know, I know. You started I know. it. I know. Oh. Well, just, just imagine the the. the that look. okay. I'm sorry. That okay. Artemis Gordon should be Bruce Campbell. There. <laughs> just could. imagine the look and the tone and the humor of Evil Dead Two set in this universe. Yeah. Sam Ray was, Oh my God, it would have been amazing. And you thought you thought right. Barry Sonnenfeld had a bunch of you know push-ins. Sam Ray was like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but they would have been in that Raimi style. Yeah. Duh. Uh, and also, I think I think I think, I think Ray, that, but I, I think Raimi would have chosen an actual dwarf to play Loveless. I could see that. I wonder who the dwarf would have been. Bruce uh, it's probably the it's probably, <laughs> um, he's probably he's, he would have he would have uh, uh, tracked down the uh, dwarf from uh, Don't Look Now. I think she's dead. Not back then. In the nineties. <laughs> yeah, I think she was still alive. She was an the 90s. old little dwarf from the seventies. I remember when I watched uh, "Don't Look Now" with um, with Keenan, oh and um, he looked at me weird when it was over because I laughed when wait, the wait. dwarf showed up. Yeah, Loveless just called himself a visionary and a genius. Is he the Kanye West of his time? Yeah, he's just as short. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wait, what just happened? Uh, there was a little hidden gun in his wheelchair, and he shot at Will Smith, but he missed. Yeah. But it looks like I hit Will Smith. It got him in the ass, kind of. But he was in front of him. How could he get him in the he, ass? Well, you see, he turned you to the see, side. Well, you see, what happened was he's black and his big ass okay, was able here, to survive. Here we hearken back to the racist versus crippled puns. Oh, God, monkey. Going, how do we get in this dark situation? Okay, I don't know what it is, but... Stumped as you are. Yeah, I have no idea what it is, but when people use the monkey as a racial epithet, that fucks with me almost worse than anything else. Because <laughs> it's... Just, oh... Look at those lack of lips. Oh, Ken. I like Kenneth Branagh as a, yeah. as a villain. He's good. Did you see uh, the Jack Ryan movie that he did? I haven't yet, no. He, he, he plays the villain. He directed it, and he plays the villain, and yeah. he's so fucking good in that movie. This Br- is- Branagh should be a Bond villain. If anything, this oh is... Oh my god, I would yeah. pee my pants okay, so, so much if they announced that. You know, you do know that um, peeing your pants isn't supposed to be a symbol of joy. That's supposed it's, to be It's some... a symbol for a lot of things for J- me. Anyway. Jizzing in your pants, that's more acceptable. Oh, and there there goes Kenneth Brown. Whee! He does the Die Hard, the Hans Gruber. Yeah. I love it, the Hans, pulling the Hans Gruber. <laughs> Actually, the, the thing is, with Kenneth Branagh, up until George Clooney bested him, that I, I believe Kenneth Branagh had this record at the Oscars where he had the most categories being nominated, like most individual categories, which were five. Oh, uh, yeah, until yeah. George Clooney got, yeah, him, yeah, when he did uh, Syriana um, and um, well, I think Good Night and Good Luck. Oh, God, what was it? No, no, it was because um, Bar- Branagh had... Best Director, Best Actor, Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Short Subject, and then he got nominated for Best Supporting Actor for mm-hmm. five. And then Clooney, I think it was The Ides of March that did it for him, where Clooney was nominated for Best Picture, you know, Producing, Directing, mm-hmm. Best Actor, Best Supporting Actor, Best uh, Original Screenplay, and then Best and, Adapted Screenplay for The Ides of March. Yeah. yeah. So all Clooney has to do is write a song, and uh, we're all fucked. See you in Washington, gentlemen. Or Brana just produced a movie in time. I want you all to walk away knowing one thing. We love Kenneth Branagh. He's the, he's the only reason I picked the... Because, you know, Cinderella's coming out, which I'm... 
I'm not I, I, I do want to see so only long. because Kenneth Branagh I've, directed I've it. I've heard nothing but good things about yeah, it. Yeah, it's got great ratings. Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett. J- D- uh, Derek uh, Jacoby is in it. He's yes. a great Shakespearean well, actor. And uh, Kenneth Branagh is, loves to use um, him. Is, but, but is all Blanchett the... playing the evil stepmother? Yeah. 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 And yeah. Helen Bonham Carter okay, is Helen playing Bonham that... the fairy so godmother. We just gotta make sure that Branagh doesn't fuck her Who's playing the talking mice? I don't know. And it also stars. I, I, um, I, I have made. I want to suggest people with the talking mice: Glenn Howerton, Rob McElhenney, and Charlie Day. <laughs> uh, it also stars Rob Stark, the actor who plays Rob Stark. Is he Prince Charming? Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. Who is uh, who's Cinderella? Uh, Lily Collins. Oh. Is that her name? No, not Lily name. Collins. She's so some you know uh, up and coming. Well, wait. Young beautiful. Is it? Oh wait, are you thinking of uh, Phil Collins' daughter, Lily Collins? No, no, no. It's not. Oh God. No, she was know. in that Snow White movie. But it's not her. It's not her. It's not her. Because Cinderella's blonde. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, Hollywood doesn't have yeah. any hair dye. No, no it doesn't. <laughs> well, there went your boners. <laughs> Which then we oh, cut to nice. that. That's a nice, <laughs> That's way, nice way to go, David. That's perfect. <laughs> Why did they cut to that shot? That made no sense. Because now they're only boner. They really wanted to show a boner. No, because now they're only boner is for each other. <laughs> <laughs> Their erection is for the wild, and here, wild here they, west. And here they go off into the sunset. And, oh, visual gag. And they're on the spider. How about you? But if I saw Wait, wasn't that, that dest- destroyed? No, no. They, they were just able to stop yeah. it before it went off the canyon. If wall. I saw that coming to my town, I'd shit my pants. Luckily, you would just need to hit your signal watch, and then Superman would zoom in. Because, but you couldn't actually see him flying because who wants to see <laughs> Superman flying? Oh, I forgot that this episode, if anything, it bears very similar to a Batman animated series episode called Showdown. That's the one with a uh, Jonah Hex. That's correct. Yeah, but it also does it better. And in it less does. Time. Oh yeah, so, Jonah Hex. I forgot about that movie. Okay. That's where you also meet uh, Rachel Gould's son. And that is wild. Oh god, wiki wild. Okay. Wiki Wiki Wild Wild West. Okay, which okay better song, Men in Black or Wild Wild West? Oh, Men Wild Black. Wild. No, I love Wild Wild. I love the song in this movie. Wild Wild West is great. I prefer the the. Stevie it's more Wonder upbeat. Song. It's faster. The lyrics are insanely <laughs> stupid. It's it's great. You know what? I love the Wild Wild West song. Salma Hayek didn't need to be in this movie, but I'm glad she was. Oh, for me all, too. Uh, for no, all the right no, reasons. No, no, ifs, ands, or buts about it. Now look, now look, get look at all the stunt players' names. Look at it. It's Clay it's Boss. it's like the visual effects names for Iron Man three when they all go. Up. Look at all those stunt performers. That is insane. Let's watch Iron Man three instead of this. Crazy. Ever. <laughs> so we must ask uh, final thoughts. Let's I go don't. around. Cameron, <laughs> Wild Wild West. Uh, I like Salma Hayek's ass. There you, well, there you go. That's there's a recommendation right there. I never need to see it again, but I will. <laughs> uh, but I will take uh, screen captures or a nice desktop wallpaper of her ass. Not necessarily from this movie either. Just just any movie. Yeah. David, Wild Wild West. I would liken this film to Kenneth Branagh's ass in this movie. <laughs> it's not there. Exactly. <laughs> Nathan? <laughs> that's, that's a good analogy. I like that. Um, like I said before, th- for me, this is one of those guilty pleasure. It's so bad, it's good movies. Yeah. Kenneth Branagh saves the day. I forgot to mention it earlier, much like... I Dialogue believe... editors, where the fuck Whoa. were they? I don't, where this, were they? Those, those <laughs> where are the hell titles. were they? Those are family members of the crew that they were, they needed a job. There were six of them and they called in sick every goddamn day. <laughs> I never noticed that before. That is hilarious. I love oh that part God. of the song where he's like... What's his name? Like, love, love this, we're coming for you. The credits are funnier than the movie itself. Oh my god. Um, but anyway, uh, I forgot to mention this earlier. Kenneth Branagh is in this movie. I felt he like is? he was in the second Harry Potter movie, which is a movie that I can't stand. I think it's terrible. Mm-hmm. But Kenneth Branagh is it in it mm-hmm. as yeah. the as the wizard, as the professor, is so fucking good. He and saves actually, the movie and makes it watchable, just like he does in Wild Wild West. What was his name? In the, was his Gilroy Lockhart? Lockhart, yeah. I love it. Lockhart, Loveless. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's my <laughs> one of my biggest guilty is. pleasure movies, along with Batman and Robin and Armageddon. And Wait, so Bill many Pope others. worked on this. Hey, director of photography. Oh, Bill so Pope. Many. Is it like the Bill the, Bill, the the Bill Pope that we're thinking of? Like, Probably. you know, who worked on, like, the surprised. Matrix and stuff? The Matrix and, and uh, he also Army did... of Darkness. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Rambo. Well, it, does know, well, from it, working, it is a great-looking movie. Well, I, I well from working on Army of Darkness, he would know about really extreme close-ups. There you go. <laughs> yeah. but, it was, but it was Michael Ballis who did the cinematography. Michael Ballis, you mean? Oh. No, that was that was Loveless. Industrial Your Honor, it's true. This man has no balls. <laughs> 
That's a Ghostbusters. Oh, well, that's what I heard. <laughs> Yeah. This is the wild, wild west. Oh, did you hear Come that on. bullshit that Paul Feig came out and said recently? Oh, shit. I don't want to hear any more about Paul Feig's Ghostbusters bullshit. No, he's I don't, not, I he do said, not give he, a he said, single well, first, fuck about that. He said that. first there was this huge uh, wave of positivity around the movie, which I call bullshit on. No, Secondly, uh, then all of a sudden I ran into all this vile, misogynistic bullshit. It's like, hey, Paul Feig, I hate to break it to you, but... Um, how do you explain misogyny if I don't want either the all-male reboot or the all-female reboot? But they're going to have Star-Lord and Magic Mike in a Ghostbusters I movie. I how could that possibly go wrong, Cameron? Please. I'll, you know what? I'll, I'll give Tanny Tate on this. He's funnier than Melissa McCarthy is ever capable of fucking being. I don't know. She's funny in Gilmore Girls. I, I, don't, I, I do I, love me see, some Tanny that's how, all, that's how <laughs> like, See, that's the thing. That's how awful she is. I do not remember her in Gilmore Girls at all. I genuinely forgot she was even Better in Better ask. Selma uh, Hayek or Channing Tatum? Oh! Oh, <laughs> well, and Rick Baker did oh, makeup. Rick Baker, the makeup I, looks amazing. Totally I, I looks gotta like give Rick it Baker. to Salma by a smidge. Just a smidge? Yeah. Now, if it's Chris Pratt but, versus... But Channing Tatum can move it better. Yeah. <laughs> if it's... I don't... Um, from the Hold On. This music oh, makes me right. laugh. Yeah. This is so inappropriate for a wild... wild for a Western flick. Yeah. But yeah, the whole the whole misogyny thing was such bullshit. Because you want, hey, here's if you're gonna reboot Ghostbusters, they don't make it a reboot. Have it connect to the originals, and this would be my cast. I've said it in a couple a couple different times. Uh, Glenn Howerton, uh, Anna Kendrick, Emma Stone, Keegan Michael Key, and Jordan Peele. Five, make it five Ghostbusters. Have Carrie Kenny Silver as like the Walter Peck, and uh, Aisha Tyler as uh, the Dana Barrett type. And um, I and I do like the idea of Chris Pratt being in there, but just not as a Ghostbuster. I could totally see him in, in that type of yeah, because he Guardians could, of the Galaxy was that kind of movie, sci-fi comedy, yeah. kind of all rolled into one. But I don't. But that's thing. I don't see Peter Quill as like a Ghostbuster kind of character. Yeah. And this is what Wild Wild West does. We talk about anything but Wild Wild West. Even Peter, John. Even John Peters. Peter's Company logo is insane. Look at that. that was, Peter's oh Entertainment. And I, I wonder if there's like a polar bear hidden somewhere in there. There probably is. And a giant spider. Yeah. And, and whatever the fuck else he wants a in A giant flippy dippy spider. Actually, my first of <laughs> Ghostbusters would include some small names you know. Named Cameron Balafont, Nathan Ulig, Michael Brown, Keenan Diaz, and some guy named Dan no. Savage. No, no, that's you know, a good would Ghostbusters you, movie. Would you be Dana Barrett? <laughs> Why not? There is no Dana. There is only Dana. And what a lovely there is no, voice he there, has. There is no Dana, only game boob. What? Is that a lovely singing voice? Oh, God. Oh, the credits are over. I forgot about that other song that was in the... Um, Valmos? The, the Enrique Iglesias Jr. song. That was a big song that year. I forgot that was... Baby. No, not that one. The other one. I could kiss away your pain. <laughs> Oh, we just watched the movie. Yeah, wow. We just watched the movie. It's over and we're still fucking talking. Yeah. Shouldn't, we, shouldn't we go home and dream about the could have been Richard Donner, Mel Gibson, oh, or George Clooney, Wild Wild West, or which would have been or amazing. Or you guys can dream about the movie I'm bringing in next week to fucking redeem Oh, that's right. What, what, move, what movie are we watching next week, Cam? Well, all I got to say about it and, um, is, whoa. <laughs> I, that I, leaves I'm it wide stoked. open. I, know, well, I, no, I already know what it is because you told me. But. Well, I'll, it could mean it could be a couple different things because he says "whoa" in a couple movies. Hmm. Don't you mean every movie? <laughs> I don't think he says it in this one. <laughs> Does he say <laughs> "whoa" in Bram Stoker's Dracula? Like "whoa"? No, Whoa. Dracula. It's Dracula. Whoa, my good sir. Or much ado about nothing. <laughs> Whoa, this Shakespeare is like totally hard. There's I'm, another great Kenneth Branagh I, 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 starring and directing movie. I will say with uh, Keanu. Reeves. I will, I will oh, say yeah. it's a Keanu Reeves movie where I will have to cover my dog's eyes for, at the beginning. Oh, that's really and, uh, sad. Oh come on, Sweet November isn't that bad? <laughs> yes, it is. Oh God. Okay, well, movie's uh, over. We gotta go now. We gotta I, I go. We gotta go. go. We're talking well after these credits. Yeah. Are gotta done. go. We really shouldn't be. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> goodbye, guys. goodbye. I guess, guess we're signing out. Yeah, I'm Love Nathan. You. I'm Cameron. I'm David. We're the commentators. See you next time. And we promise you, Brian Lee is not racist. We, <laughs> at least for tonight. Yes. <laughs> Woo.